in the centre of the ground. John Nichols won the toss. And there's the siren for the commencement of 1972 Grand Final. As Peter Jones comes in with McKellar. McKellar gets a good one down, picked up out wide and driven out by Stroud. It's an opportunity for Walsh. And Walsh left puts it down towards Stool and it's over the line, out of bounds. Out of bounds on half forward flank with the Tigers in attack from the bounce and John Nichols won the toss. Boundary umpire in possession. In come the big fellows, Jones well done. Sproul's going to trap it, gets it nicely, boots it down quickly towards centre half forward. Over the head of the pack, Southby comes out to trap it. Southby's in bundles of trouble. Hit out wide, Southby free kick on the leg. Dramatic gesture by umpire Bill Dell. Well, Southby, first free kick of the match, down in the back pocket on the outer side. Another nice kick by Southby, down towards centre wing. Up fires Jones, knocked away by Hunt. Comes through to Gallagher. Knocked out to Jackson. Jackson is racing towards Nichols. Knocked away by Boynich. Out to where Walsh has the chance now. The break clear with a left foot kick up towards centre wing. Over the head of Robertson. Comes in towards uh, McMillan. Knocked out towards... Uh, it's uh, in there is uh, the wingman, centre wingman in uh, Bond. And the free kick will go. Now it's going to, to uh, Gallagher. Gallagher of uh, Carlton. Centre wing out of sight. Here he is, one of the best rovers in the business over the centre half forward position. Jess is out a little too soon and didn't get up high enough. Walls behind, put in a straight jacket, breaks clear, left foot snap, first score of game, but it's only a short poster. Carlton, first blood in the 1972 grand final against Richmond, and can they break the hoodoo? That's the question on everybody's lips. They haven't beaten Richmond in a finals match since 1920. They've played them four times this year, and the best they got was a draw. Here is a kickoff by Dick Clay, one of the best full-backs in the business, and Southby at the other end. The ball's knocked out, and Jones knocks it down. There's an infringement there. An umpire Deller in charge of his third finals match for the series, but his first grand final is administering things well as the free kick goes to the big ginger-headed uh, Ruckman McKellar to the half-forward line. Knocked down by Richardson. He is Armstrong. A great game last week. Probably one of the best on the field. Francis Burke gets checkmated. Finds Kevin Bartlett helping him out of embarrassment. Over to Duell. Duell's a cool customer. Said, I'm worried about Hart in the second half, but not the first. Up to the centre wing. Chandler, the centre player, is out of position. It's gone to Robertson. Robertson carries them across the line with the Blues into attack hotly pursued by Walsh at that stage it's centre wing position out of side of the ground in come the Ruckman, it's Jones and McKellar McKellar didn't win that one, a chance for Morris, Morris goes to the ground, they tumble on top of him, umpire comes in and indicates he'll bounce it well, Morris has been in the thick of things up to date Peter Jones is obviously going assigned against McKellar at this early stage, picked up and driven down by Hall Jessalinko down in front, Davison loses it goes again, beats Sheedy Beats him pointless, under his left foot, that short one is great football, and the mark is taken by Paul. Well, there's the dazzling skill of Alex Jeselenko once again. Sheedy flung himself desperately at it, was unsuccessful, and Keogh will shoot for goal. Keogh about 35 to 40 yards out, the angle is about the same, a 45 degree, kicks for goal and puts it through. come down from the Bendigo lead and been an impressive player for Carlton in his two seasons. He's been a great ruck rover and as Farrell said last night, sometimes you'd call him a rover but wherever you put him, he plays well for the Blues. And he's changing in the forward pocket on Kevin Sheedy which suggests that uh, Stephen Keogh today will be a rover. Trevor. Trevor, I mean. Trevor Keogh. Back in centre. Jones wins the tap down. Goes to Chandler. Chandler is tackled by Sproul. Out towards Keogh, it comes again. Nips in, blind turns out of the pack. Boots it back towards centre forward. Big Nick from behind, taps it down. It comes to Bartlett. Bartlett gets out of trouble nicely with a left foot kick back towards centre. And the mark is taken by Morris. Morris plays on. The pace is a cracker. Up towards half forward. Duel and Hart fly. Duel and Hart. Play on, I think, Carl. Play on it is. And the free kick going to Jeff Southby. Beautiful decision, controversial. The crowd's yelling its head off. The ball on the half-back line. Here's Morris again. What Dashy showed in the first time. Couldn't break clear that time. Beautifully tackled, I thought, by Robertson. The umpire says push in the back. And uh, Kevin Morris gets the free. What did you make of it, Doug? Well, the umpire says push, but I thought, like you, Tony, it looked a good tackle. But we rode him into the ground. He didn't throw the ball back correctly. And now there's about 10 or 15 yards. Here he is. Good player, this kid. 
just back in the side really after being suspended for four weeks out to the full forward zone and the mark is taken by Mackay Mackay showed form uh, last week which had been absent from the earlier encounter on the MCG and it was uh, it gladdened the hearts of many a Carlton supporter he's in form now back to the halfback line Picking up the crumbs as Armstrong doing well again into the centre. A two-out affair, spoilt by Carlton, defending well into the arms of the Carltonians in the centre. Robertson kicks it back here, right to Keogh. Keogh, top kick winner on the field last week, breaks clear for his third kick in about one minute. Up into the full forward zone it goes, cleared by Clay, breaking away. Good play by uh, Tigers. A lot of pace by Clay that time. The umpire's whistle is blown, long behind the play. And I would say that Paul Sproul, you're the offender, and Trevor Keogh's to take his fourth kick. Keo between centre and centre half ball. Too far out to score. Very congested forward line as they wait in the 10 yard square as he kicks it down. Gallagher's going to come from behind. Up high he goes. Hit out wide. A chance for a kick off the ground by Hunt. Not a good one. Nick goes over the top of him. A bad tackle. And the free kick will go to Rex Hunt. Rex Hunt. John Nichols using his weight too enthusiastically there a good kick by Hunt towards half forward off the hands of the pack towards Richardson but Sproul comes in a long punt kick by Sproul right up to the 10 yard square Mackay drops a sit up hand pass across to O'Connell and Carlton go out of defence again long low kick by O'Connell towards centre wing Francis Burke takes the mark half forward out of side one of the best games uh, you'll see for a long time coming from this bloke up into the full forward area. One against two, spoiled by Mackay, got over the top. The Rover's not there, coming grabbed around the throat. Right into the pocket it goes, it's desperate football, a chance. Richardson, it, it's a goal. Mm, he fumbled it too, he fumbled it. He was lucky to get out of it, but it's quick thinking to do it. Barry Richardson, the gentleman with the moustache, came into his chest like a bullet, dropped it fumbled but was quick enough to bang it out and through for the first goal so the scores are level but for one point Carlton leading by a point Carlton's goal kicker Keo, Richmond's goal kicker Richardson the umpire Bill Della the game's just started and it's a thriller from the bounce in the center it's McKellar with a big leap Peter Jones well done tackled and Bond's kick is smothered down they're going once again a hand pass is a push there and a free kick goes to Morris umpire Della very quickly onto that one and Morris will boot the Tigers into attack with a punt kick which is a bad one David Mackay goes for the long run out with Baum neither can reach it as they jostle it's out of bounds out of bounds about 20 yards away from the behind post in ruck we see Baum and Mackay on this occasion Mackay but Baum got the tap down it goes to Keogh of Carlton Keogh in the back pocket now around the members wing looking for Dixon and Dixon is marked cleverly a good mark under pressure from David Dixon, the ex-Preston Association player. He boots it now up towards half forward. David Walls from behind. McKellar is there too. Francis Burke boots it off the ground of, to Bartlett. Bartlett up towards half forward. The big pack set themselves, knocked away by uh, Hall. Hand pass to Keogh. Keogh, a very prominent player, was manhandled. It's being held by the leg, but uh, umpire Jella will ball it up on the centre wing to half forward flank for uh, for Richmond on the members side. It's Della's big day. Two other great uh, men in white of former years in Shields and Sleaf announced their retirement. The ball's uh, negative in ruck play, picked up by Morris again. Wins himself another kick to the half-forward line. They've got a man there. Richardson couldn't hang on to the mark. Well played behind by Ben Waite. Vigorous over to Duell. Wasn't a good hand pass. Duell makes good, however, and picks up after a fumble. The ball into the centre of the ground. The, t uh, the uh, Blues back into attack. Here comes Armstrong. Shouldn't fumble. Grab, not in possession. His free kick. The umpire calls a play on. It was right in front of him. That's an error. The ball's down towards Armstrong again. Gets pushed in the back. And the second time, he gives it to him. There's no doubt about that, Tony. He played the equaliser that time. Armstrong who is in the centre of the ground. His opponent is uh, Sproul, takes the free kick, and that's the position he is. Right in the centre. It's a good long one. Look at the Jezzelenko direction. Behind the pack, Clay almost took it. Look at Jezza. Out to Walls. Walls in trouble. Down. Jackson. Bad luck. That was full luck as Nichols hand passed so perfectly towards him or pushed it on, and Jackson couldn't quite make it. If the ball had dropped, the opportunity would have been his one point instead of one goal. It bounced out of range. Dick Clay to the northern stand side, a long torpedo. McKellar flies, comes down to Keogh. In there is Sheedy, but Keogh gets the ball across to Dixon. Dixon onto the boot, up towards Jackson. But Jackson will take the free kick. Clay was shepherded out by Jessalenko. Good play by Jessalenko, worth the try. 
This is Dick Clay, the fullback for the Richmond side, playing from the back pocket and along the new stand wing. It's coming up now to the half-back line. Hart flies from a long way out of position and a long way behind the pack. Down in front, it's a chance for Hall. Good hand pass again, second time in a row. Took it himself. Front of the pack, Hart, a right foot kick. What's he doing down there? The ball up here to the centre wing. Richardson again. Hand pass to Stroud. Stroud is greatly improved player since transferring from Essendon. Over the half-forward line. Oh, pushed in the back to the full forward. Bam. Buffeted from pillar to post, gets the free kick on the half-forward flank as McLean races back now into the goals for which he is chiefly responsible. Baum, a good goal kicker. In fact, he's got 50 up to be uh, equal second amongst the uh, Richmond club men for the season. McLean, the full forward, has 54. Here is Baum trying for his 51st and his first on this grand final day, and it's a rocket! Australia for years have been saying send Neil Baum back as a full forward and I think there was the perfect example of it. A magnificent kick by Baum, a perfect kick by Sproul downfield. David Mackay tried to smother. He was under extreme pressure from the great kick of Sproul and Baum finishes off and finishes off beautifully. Baum won the front position beautifully on that uh, encounter with, uh, with Mackay. It, uh, it was uh, a matter of getting in front, slowing down and Mackay's weight of his body just had to uh, pushed into the back of uh, Baum and the resultant free kick. This is often a dubious one, Farrell, with this business of propping in front and so many forwards, including your Peter McKenna, have paid the benefit when they prop in front and the full back comes crashing into them. Back in the centre, umpire Bill Della, the scoreboard showing Richmond two goals straight and Carlton one two. It goes straight to McKellery, misses it. Francis Burke will help him out. Breaks through very well. Boots it down over Hart's head. Here comes McLean. And a very good mark. And Ricky McLean, who also kicks the ball tremendous distances, is about 65 to 70 yards out. He's kicking to the scoreboard goal, number 31. A study of deliberation is Ricky McLean. The ex-Carlton player, now a Tiger, kicks and kicks it off direction, kicks it well off direction, just makes one behind. Carlton now, 1-2 and Richmond 2-1. Yes, the pace is a cracker in this grand final. The uh, favourites, of course, Richmond. But Carlton opening slightly better. But Richmond at this point have the leaders. Southby boots it to the members' side. Long kick, good 70 yards. Jones tries to hook it back over. It's pushed by Dixon out to trail of Richmond. He hooks it back towards McLean. McLean flies, but a chance. Pushes it on, kicks it off the ground across the face of goal. And it's out of bounds. Forward pocket for the Tigers. Scoreboard in. Two goals one against one goal two with Richmond the team on top. They're on top by five points as Mackay wins in the ruck but it gets right past Hurst to whom I think the tap down was meant. It's gone into the pocket. Richmond in possession of the ball. Thread the ball along the line but not for too long. Barn kept it in. Knocked down by Southby and out for that encounter. A throw in coming up in the full forward pocket at the scoreboard end and the scoreboard shows Richmond leading by five points after 13 minutes of play in the first quarter of the 1972 grand final. A huge crowd, well over 100,000 as Mackay goes in. I thought he beat Baum again for it. It's uh, Richmond's ball. It's come out into the open spaces. All Carltonians there. Mackay's too slow. So, very lucky. Grabbed high and the free kick has gone against uh, Richmond's McMillan and has been taken by Mackay in the back line. Just outside the goal square, his raking punt kick is a ripper. It's come right up to the centre of the ground. McKellar's on his own. Won't mark even though. Knocks it down. One of the few misses by Francis Burke as the ball's been picked up by Gallagher into attack and a good mark by Walt at centre half forward. The play on is to Armstrong. Barry Armstrong doors Big Nick who flies. Will he kick it off the ground or kick it through? It'll do it. Sergio Silvani gave the message that Nick was going to be the man to kick some goals. At the 13 and a half minute mark, he has not been on the ball. And proof positive, a magnificent goal from Nichols that time. He leapt tremendously high, recovered with great agility for a man of 33 years old, and it just dribbled through. It just made it, but a grand goal by the captain coach of Carlton. Back in the centre now, McKellar still on the ball, of course. Peter Jones still there. McKellar wins it. Gallagher tries to trap it, breaks through, runs into a lot of trouble. Umpire says play on. Free kick to Gallagher. Adrian Gallagher. Driving to his cover, Master Peter Jones. Gallagher with his left foot down the Jesselenko direction. Dick plays with him. Jesselenko, perfect judgment in between Clay and Sheedy and took it with tremendous skill. Well, here's no the one champ. more surprised than Kevin Sheedy. Here's the champ. Yeah, Sheedy almost let it go, Thorold. 
Jasalenko, 40 to 45 yards out. Difficult angle, one great goal. One magnificent goal. And Carlton looking a million dollars with a wonderful two-pronged attack of number 25 there, Alex Jesselenko and the captain coach and one of the greatest players that's ever played football in John Nichols lurking in the 10-yard square. And one of the great moves of this season, John Nichols to the forward pocket, it now throws the onus on the Richmond defence, where, as before the game started, it was all Richmond's attack. McKellar wins the tap down, it goes to Morris, he threads his way through with a left foot kick up towards half forward, but O'Connell is in the way, and he'll be paid the mark. Come back home, Royce. Despite the efforts of Royce Hart to pop through that goal, the mark was paid to John O'Connell in the back pocket position, but on this occasion the mark was taken almost at the half-back flank. Might have been a free kick, though. The most important thing to have developed in this game in the first 15 minutes is the reversal of form since last they played against Richmond by the Carlton side. As different as chalk from cheese to the centre, Jones, no mark. Play on calls umpire Deller in a flash. The ball over into the centre of the, a huge uh, gaggle of players. And it looks like it's going Carlton's way, and I can't tell you why. Maybe you had a better view. Here is Jackson with the ball just on the defence side of centre, and now they're well and truly into attack after a 55-yard kick. It's over the half-forward line. Big Nick from behind at the second bite. Not there. Not forward by Hall to Jesselenko. Here's the magician. A high kick won't get to the goals this time or produce the rabbit out of the hat. Into the full forward area. Hall follows up. Running into the goals. This is... Well, where's Hall playing? It's a $64 question at this stage of the game because Chandler's not in the centre. He's running out on the ball. Vin waits on Barry Richardson on the half-back half -back flank. flank. Yep, yep. Where's them um, Barnes down there with Mackay? And Dick Clay, who's got a bigger puzzle than we've got because his opponent is Jesselenko, prepares to kick out. Jesselenko very close to him. Clay's kick, not a good one. Burke and Robertson go. Burke, better anticipation. Hall's there in the middle of it. Robertson fights for it on the ground. Here's a chance now for Burke. Burke is tackled. Rakes on strongly. Will be tackled again. Out to McKellar. McKellar a long one out to centre wing to Morris. Morris has got the chance to boot the Tigers into attack with an awkward one. Ricky McLean gets a good bounce. Doesn't handle it very well. He's in trouble. Breaks it nicely. The umpire says around the neck. And the free kick will go to Ricky McLean. Well, that was uh, a good piece of play by McLean who had to stop on a crookedy bit. Boots it now towards the 10 yard square, bound from behind, knocked down towards uh, uh, McMillan, but coming across is Hurst, picks it up for Carlton, drives it down to Dixon, he's backed up by Armstrong, Armstrong pushed out of the way, will uh, come out towards uh, Bond, Bond lines up, and it's off line and one behind only. So the Tigers move to 2 2 14, Carlton 3 3 21. Kevin Sheedy gets a message from the runner, incidentally, at that stage. The Tiger goal kickers are Richardson and Baum, and for Carlton, Nichols, Keogh, and Jesselenko. Carlton, 3-3-21, a leading Richmond, 2-2-14. And we've played for 18 minutes now into the first quarter. It's overcast, cool, but it's not going to rain as Jones flies up for the mark, but just as he was airborne, the whistle sounded, and the shrill sound sounds a bit of a death knell for Carlton in defence at the moment. Richardson has got the free, evidently for Shepherding. Richardson on the half-forward line in front of the members' stand, kicking to the scoreboard goal. A huge crowd full of gay colour. A dull day, but beautiful for playing the game and watching as it goes into the goal square and off hands for a point only. Carlton 3-3, lead Richmond 2-3 by one goal after 19 minutes of play. It's a thrilling game. It's been a thrilling opening. And the big thing is Carlton's improved form since last these sides met. We know they're trying to break a hoodoo which has existed since 1920. 19 minutes have elapsed in the first quarter. Nichols still resting in the forward pockets. Your job, Peter Jones. Punched away by McKellar. Armstrong goes after it. Armstrong pursued by Morris. Beats him. Clever Armstrong. Jackson, look out. He's in a lot of trouble. Back to Walls. Walls and boots it down the Nichols direction. Nichols and Boyanich. Nichols wins it. Oh, he could have gone on, but he doesn't need to. He will still kick the goal. You could see him pause. Look, will I go? He beat Boyanich. Point to and John Nichols, the giant, is looking tremendously dangerous. 16 stone 7 of skill. Voynich in the pocket, and this will be posing a headache for coach Tom Hafey as coach Nichols kicks his second goal. Well, this has been wonderful thinking, Carl Murray. Yes, a lot of people thought that Nichols may have been placed at full forward last week. 
but today the big uh, move has been brought about by John Nichols spending long periods in the forward pocket and the initiative has been taken from Richmond and it's now Carlton's way. That's Nichols second, Tony. Yes, Nichols two, Jethalinko one and Keo one make up the four for the Carlton side and the 4-3 looks good against 2-3 after 20 minutes of play in the first quarter. Paul's on the ball, Tony. He's opponent is Morris, incidentally. Carlton, the winners of ten premierships, and Richmond, the winners of seven, are fighting it out as Jones goes in but is beaten by McKellar, but Carlton win the ball, and it's Chandler over the heads of the half-forwards. Here's Nick again against Boyanich, brushes him aside, Walls races through. Well done, Sheedy, bounced up like a rubber ball. Kicks the ball back to the half-back line. Behind the play, it's Chandler again. A success, I thought, in the centre last week, but I'm still interested to know what they do with the wingers when he moves down forward. Over to Keo, and Keo wins himself another kick. I'll check with you, Jack, how many... That's his sixth kick in 20 minutes of play. He's a star. Chief kick winner last week and chief kick winner today so far. Behind the play. Walls, it's a goal. Well, Chandler's not in the centre, that's for sure. Hall's on the ball. Armstrong is playing in the centre on Crowell. Chandler's position, well, someone will have to tell me. And Hall and Chandler are ruck roving on the half-forward flank. Mackay, a permanent back pocket player and wait out to the half-back flank. It's a coach's dream. All the moves are coming off. Yes, they've come off superbly, and uh, the coach is resting in the forward pocket, and I'm sure feeling very, very happy. Look at the runners coming out. The messages are there. Umpire Della is the umpire in the grand final. Peter Jones will win this one. He thumped it to Chandler. Chandler lost it. Crawling after the ball is Morris. Morris loses it. Walsh is coming through with great power. Great vine turn. Clever hand pass to Burke. Burke in trouble but does it nicely. Left puts it down where McLean's in front. Here's Barm too. Cummings in a lot of trouble but tackles it. He's caught but plays on very strongly. Umpire says too high. And the free kick goes to Darrell Cummings. Darrell Cummings within range. His justification the team today is to kick goals because Bartlett will do most of the roving and Cummings is about 45 to 50 yards out at centre half forward. It's a nice looking kick. It's a great kick and that's a goal to Cummings. So the Richmond goal scorers now are Balm, Richardson and Cumming. Darrell Cumming from Mildura. And for Carlton, two to Nichols and one each to Keogh, Jezelenko and Walls. Carlton still lead, 5-3 to 3-3. They were doing better a moment ago before that goal. They had three up. Now they're back to two. 23 minutes of play. It'll be a tired runner before the match is out. Bill Della, 28 years of age, is the central umpire. His big moment and... It's McKellar winning the ball again against Jones, who uh, isn't beating him for the reach. It's Dixon trying to get his way out of trouble too long, I thought. Paid the benefit of the doubt, gone to Robertson, who somehow got it, despite the tackle, pinning his arms to Armstrong to the half-forward line. Walls again, down last week, right on top this week, playing marvellously at centre-half forward. A former state representative in that position, up to Big Nick versus Boy, and it's got it again. Jezelenko, goal! Oh. It's a goal! Look at Big Nick. Look at Nick across, and Nichols almost took it again with a soaring leap over the top of Voynich. And danger, danger, danger for Richmond with Nichols there, and Jesselenko gets his second goal. And the, the difference in Carlton's method of play this week, the big long kick to the goal square, yep. is the big factor in their uh, change of tactics this week. There hasn't been a short one, Thorold, of that there's no doubt at all. It's what a change it is, and Peter Jones still beaten by Francis Burke this time. Battling for it is Keogh, out wide to Morris, free kick went to Bartlett, Bartlett boots them into attack, down it goes looking for Balm, in front is Mackay, up goes Selfie, Selfie recovers very nicely, breaks away from the pack, he'll kick a long one as he always does, straight to Robertson, perfect kick, Robertson takes the mark, half-back flank. And no one on the half-forward flank for Robertson to kick it to, so what does he do, slows down and finds the loose man now coming, and it's Hurst on the centre wing to half-back flank area. Hurst, the long swooping left foot uh, swing of his up towards half forward. Walls from behind, knocks it forward. But Francis Burke, is it Francis Burke? No, it's Iwood coming across the back of the pack. Up towards half forward, his kick goes. Dool tries with Hart, coming through his south feet. Hand pass to Binway, and out to go forward with the loose man. Up towards Jezelinko, and Hart, and uh, play rather. Jezelinko uh, wins out again, gets it across, and in comes play. Hooks it back with the left foot. It'll go out of bounds on the uh, centre wing position, no it won't, as Gallagher hooks it back in, drives it up towards Big Nichols, he taps it down, here's Clay coming to it, but the free kick will go to Voynich in the back pocket. 
still three goals separating them. And Boyanich, who's got more than his share of troubles with Nichols, who's dominating the game, gets it back here towards McKellar. And McKellar can't take it, but here's Bartlett screaming through the back. Beautiful play by Kevin Bartlett. Look at the hand pass to Roy Park. Richmond captain's been well checked by Duell again so far. Right into the goal now. It's Calvin in front. Mackay loses it to Cunning. Now Cunning will score his second. Well, that was well done by Cumming. That was perfect anticipation. And the Rovers green. He screened at the 10-yard square, restrained himself. He could have kicked it straight into the scoreboard, but just banged it through from only one yard out. And that was copybook roving by Darrell Cumming, who's already fulfilled the expectations of the Richmond camp. Two goals in the first quarter. It was 25 minutes gone, and the scoreboard couldn't look better. 6-3 to Carlton, 38 points. And Richmond, 4-3, 27. There's the runner. Graying hair is Master Roger Dean, ex captain, ex best and fairest, and in Richmond's opinion, one of the greatest small men that have ever been in the Richmond camp. What bad luck for Roger! He broke his wrist and or arm against Hawthorne, and he would have been an automatic inclusion because at the age of 32, he'd had a magnificent season. Back with Bill Della. In ruck, McKellar, the big run up. Jones coming to it, but McKellar wins it. It bounces off the hands of uh, Bartlett. Out towards centre wing. In there is Jackson. He's bundled out of the way by Walsh. Uh, Beats Walsh. Tapped on towards uh, Paul. Paul lines up. And he's going to put it up to Nichols. The mark for Nichols. And it could be a 15 yard penalty. We'll wait on it. No, it's not. It was well acted by Big John, expecting that he might have got the 15 yard penalty, but he's still within five, ten yards of goal on a fairly acute angle. Here is the champion. Only five players in the history of the VFL have played more games than he has. This is number 295 for him today, and his captain coach. Watch him go. Well, that's his third. That's his third, and how brilliantly done it was. And Kevin Hall, a surprise ruck rover, was the man who got that ball down so quickly with that brilliant aggressive pace of Hall's. And Nichols takes yet another mark. And let's reflect back again. Nichols has not taken any position on the ball at all. To say he hasn't done his job would be a glorious British understatement. He's kicked three, and Roger Dean, the runner, runs out in the field to speak to Boynich. He's running down on half forward flank on the grandstand side in the centre ground is Peter Jones. There's Roger Dean going down for the message. Francis Burke hits it on past Armstrong. Hart can't take it. Free kick to Hart. Royce Hart being closely attended by Duell. Duell playing very well in the early stages. Not a good kick by Hart. Southby comes out, drops the sitter. He's bundled out of the way, but comes back to it in grand fashion. Out towards coming it goes. Hurst is in there. He travels it like a musician, gets it to Gallagher, but Gallagher is dispossessed of it. Coming to it is Chandler. Breaks through the pack in grand fashion. Gets it up towards centre of the ground. McKellar, a hand pass across to Sproul. Sproul now up towards full forward. Bam from behind. And it's O'Carlton Mark and O'Connor. Well done. What it's a Southby. wonderful mark it was by It was Southby. a beautiful mark. It was a strong, tenacious attempt by Southby under insurmountable odds. A long kick by Southby right down to centre wing. Up flies Jones, but coming across was Highwood. In there is Armstrong, tackled, loses possession of the ball, comes back to it, was held again, and he'll get the free kick. Will Armstrong on half-back flank out of side. Armstrong, a marvellous game, along with a couple of other of his teammates to get his side into the grand final. Kicks the ball into attack. Walls again, but he's against two of them this time, and Carlton keep it going forward. Highwood saves the ball on the half-back line. Gave it to Clay, who read the play well and came up to the half-back line from full-back. Kicks them into attack with a long kick. The bounce beats them, but all except Southby. Southby's recovery is grand. He turns with plenty of time now. Kicks it back into the centre. A good mark to Robertson, but he didn't hold it for quite long enough. Is the umpire paying it? It is a mark to Robertson. Carlton 7-3, Richmond 4-3, three goals separating them, and Big Nick three goals as a deciding factor so far. Robertson's beautiful drop kick, as usual, is well over the half-forward line. From behind, a couple flew high, but couldn't hang on to it. Keo, a good kick winner. A left foot snap is one point only. Keo has been almost the dominant player on the ground in kick getting. He certainly has. That's his seventh, Jack Cameron. He's been a great player in this first quarter. It's the 30-minute part. Elapses, Tommy Hafey looking very disconsolate. He's never exactly one who laughs a lot, but this moment he won't. Out wide it goes, Peter Jones and McKellar will contest this one. Good punch, Peter Jones. Out to Jackson. Oh, Jackson took one in the face from Highwood. 
downfield it goes and Jackson indicates he didn't like it and Ben Waite says take it Sano we're going to gain 45 yards and this will give Dixon or will it be Keown or Gallagher the umpire says Dixon and Dixon is within kicking range it'll need to be a good one but he's certainly within range once again from this grandstand half forward flank he kicks the Richmond goal on the 45 degree angle Dixon comes in kicks it high and puts it straight through the centre it was never offline and Carlton looking very good eight goals four Carlton 52 points uh, Richmond four goals three 27 well who would have thought that Carlton playing their fourth final in a row, would have got this break on the favourites, the Tigers. Peter the Jones has rucked the whole quarter, though. The whole quarter with uh, Mackay permanently in the back pocket, Nichols permanently in the forward pocket. Bounce again, knocked down by Francis Burke, picked up by Dixon, smothered. Burke in there again around the net, Francis Burke free kick. Just 10 yards forward of the centre, Francis Burke, one of the great final performers, a beautiful drop kick right to the point of the 10 yards square. Mackay punches it away, a chance for McLean, has it now, swings around, left puts it, off line for one behind. 4-4, 28 Richmond, 8-4, 52 Carlton. The full forward for Carlton, Jeffalenko has two goals. The full forward for Richmond, McLean has two points. Carlton 8-4, leading by four goals. Leading by four goals, the greatest margin to separate them so far in the game. We've played for 31 minutes, and out comes the kick towards McKellar, who will spoil Jones. Jones hooked it on, maybe it was the other way around, and here's Morris, who's showing great pace, getting to the ball first, and with time to spare, has to turn back and kick to the half-forward line, right in front of the stand, and Jones takes a good mark. Rucking well, and now with some field marking, Jones is uh, showing his colours for the Carlton side. Right in front of the member stand. The ball will carry the wing. Rex Hunt waits down, McKellar climbs over the top but can't take the mark. Dixon pounces on it and the umpire is given a free Richmond's way and Rex Hunt, still a stone lighter than at other times in his career because of hepatitis, kicks the ball to the half-forward line, over the half-forward line. Richardson in front but he couldn't hang on to the mark. It's Marty McMillan running through, snapped the ball right out of a Carlton player's arm, side steps and bangs one through. well it was done he came on as 19th man down at VFL Park and kicked three goals after half time and there's the scoreboard 8-4 to 5-4 and Carlton a sensational opening in which Vin Waite has been on the halfback flank David Mackay permanent back pocket and Chandler and Hall have been the ruck rovers or the ruckmen whichever you like to call them the umpire is Della the bounce favours McKellar very badly for Carlton's point of view picked up by Armstrong goes across towards Jones Jackson's in tons of trouble fight for it and battles for it and down they go he pushed Morris that time but the umpire forgets it or chose to ignore it it's going to be bounced once again Jones the Burke wins the tap down it goes to McKellar Bork sends it high up towards half forward all Carlton here Robertson can't take it and comes through uh, quickly there is Bartlett his kick is smothered by Dool back to Bartlett Bartlett fires it towards goal but it's offline and out on the full free kick to be taken by David Mackay, the permanent back pocket player in this first quarter, end of the first quarter with the sound of the siren, sees Carlton on eight goals, four, 52, leading Richmond, five goals, four, 34, in a scintillating first quarter by the Blues. 13, four to seven, five. Six goals separating them after 10 minutes of play. It wouldn't need to keep going to, uh, like this too much longer for it to be over at three quarter time. The grand final continues as the ball comes towards Robertson, but Jones is over the top of all. It's a free kick going uh, Richmond's way, and Francis Burke knows that he's won that verdict for uh, being impeded. Here, from the centre uh, of the ground, a bit off the right of his boot, it's gone out to the half-forward flank right. Sproul tried hard to pick up the ball, but couldn't. It's behind to Ben White. Sproul chases him down. A long hand pass like Polly Farmer straight to the arms of Armstrong. What a beautiful hand pass. Up to the half-forward line as the Blues come into attack again. Walls winning handsomely, gives it to Jones, who's also doing well. The whole side has lifted itself up to the full forward zone, and the mark is to Boyanich, who takes his first trick in a quarter and a half. Yes, his first kick for Ray Boynich. Nichols on the mark as Boynich downfield. Vincent Waite, your chance. Up above Burke. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. This is easily Richmond's best player. That's his tenth kick for the match, and he boots a long one downfield where it's going to be Mackay, the big leaper, and almost took a good one. Cleverly out to Sheedy. Sheedy's in the forward pocket. Shoots for goal and puts it off high. And Sheedy and Dool 
have some minor words of abrasion and it's through for one behind. If Jeff Southby will take it and the scoreboard advances one point for the Tigers, they're 7-6 and Carlton a 13-4. Jeff Southby for the outer side. Glorious 70-yard kick, really groping through the air. Tap down now, it goes to uh, Sheedy. Sheedy a hand pass out towards Bartlett. Bartlett has it forward pocket, a full half forward flank. A long kick towards the uh, forward pocket, knocked away by Mackay. Picked up by Richardson, a poor kick by Richardson. And uh, it will be uh, taken by uh, Richmond. The hand pass across to uh, Mc uh, McMillan. And it's through or out of bounds on the full. Free kick to be taken by Jeff Southby. Incidentally, Bond's in the, forward, in the back pocket. Shooty's on the ball. And now it's Jeff Southby. Southby from Sandhurst, who won VFL selection after only nine league games. Kicks to the half-back line. What a performance that was. And it was Richmond in front. Starting to uh, play a little better in that position. Over here towards um, Sheedy. Picked up now by Bartlett. Bartlett's kick is high. Put several defenders under the hammer as Mackay goes in and knocks Baum flat. Yes, and free kick against him. <laughs> Baum has the ball in the full forward pocket. Tricky angle here, but he's got a couple up so far. A couple of field goals across into the far pocket. And the ball hits the behind post, which means... Oh, well, I thought... Uh, it hit the post before it went across the line. Must have been vice versa, so it's a point, and Southie will kick off again. 13 minutes gone in the second term with Carlton 13-4, leading Richmond a merry dance, and Tom Hafey must feel that all his nightmares have come at once. As Roger Dean, the runner, goes onto the ground once again. Southby kicks out with his usual immaculate style. A long one it is. Well done, Jones. A chance now for Gallagher and Armstrong. Armstrong comes in to tackle Sproul. Armstrong brilliantly out to Jackson. Jackson under pressure from Burke beats him. Turns onto his left foot. Looks to get smothered. Goes to Armstrong. Uh, he, uh, Dixon. Dixon left foot it down. Underneath it. Jesselinko! And Wayne Walsh shakes his head as if how could one believe it. Jesselinko, who looks as if he may be in some trouble this week after a battering last week, is still his brilliant, effervescent best. He's a long way out from goal. He's a long kick, as Ali Jeselenko. Kicks it high to the 10-yard square, Big Nick. Voynich goes up. To the ground it comes. Robert Walls out towards Jackson. Jackson can't reach it before it's over the boundary line, out of bounds. Well, Carlton playing with tremendous skill. Jeselenko's marking a delight to watch. And John Nichols comes in to do battle. McKellar behind him. Chance for there for... Oh, round the neck! Round the neck, a very bad tackle. And Adrian Gallagher, very delighted to accept the free kick. Gallagher, the quietest of the Carlton smaller players, won that free kick hands down. He's only 20 yards out on a 45-degree angle. Could be goal number 14 for Carlton. It is. Adrian Gallagher's first goal, Carlton's 14th, and could the grand final be over at the 14-minute mark of the second quarter? The Blues lead by almost seven goals. Well, I don't know about that, but I do know that seven of the Carlton 18 have contributed to the score with goals. 14 goals up to seven. They lead by seven after getting a two-goal break, then a three, and so on the avalanche went. They steamrolled them. They lead by seven. And here's Roger Dean, the former captain out. He's busier than all of the players. Uh, Jones again, down to Jackson. Here they come again. To the half-forward line, Keo versus Walsh. Collision in midair. They're both OK. And Walsh has taken the mark. The message has been taken to Rex Hunt at this time. Direct from uh, Coach Hapey as Walsh kicks the ball into attack. Richmond into attack. Royce Hart's been smothered completely behind. The ball's been taken by Vin Waite. The weight and dual combination converging on Hart is too much. To the half-forward line taken by uh, Bond. Here's Bond breaking away. One of the fastest players in the league to the half-forward line. Richardson on his own and a game mark. He was running right underneath it. He knew the pack was coming in from behind and he was in for a bone rattler, but he took the mark at centre-half forward and Barry Richardson has done very well. Several of the other forwards need to improve their games 100%. A chance to score from 55 yards out. Oh, it's a rocket. It's a beautiful kick. It's a beauty. He's kicking for goal. It's a delight. That's Barry Richardson second. And that was a swift rebound. Wake kicked the ball and kicked it out of danger. Went straight to Bond and Bond with his tremendous pace broke downfield. Kicked it straight to Richardson who was Wake's opponent. And the centre half back who had a chance. Peter Jones, we're looking across as Barry Richardson's gone across to look after Robert Walls. And that was the tip that we had from earlier in the game. And here comes Peter Jones who's done well against McKellar. Down it goes. 
Morris battles for it. Well played, Robertson out to Armstrong. Armstrong suits his left foot, looking for Walls. And Barry Richardson, who's no pacey man, is lumbering after him. Walls then kicks it back over Jesselinko's head. Here comes Big Nick and Walsh. Well done, Boynich. Boynich goes for the run. He's tackled by Hall. He misses it badly. Hall gets a hand pass, which is not a good one. Picked up there by Morris. A shooty, shooty downfield. Up they go and hit away. Here comes Robertson. And breaking away is Hurst. Hurst was tackled high, out to Robertson, Robertson to Armstrong, Armstrong onto his left foot, will kick it out wide to Gallagher, and chipping in to Sproul, Sproul did it very well and boots it out to open territory, and racing after the ball at Hart and Dool. Dool is going to lead in the run for it, Dool should take a free kick, and Dool will take a free kick, and what a wonderful job he's done against Hart. A magnificent job from one of the most unobtrusive players in league football. He finds Chandler in the centre of the ground. Chandler breaks the tackle, boots it well down forward. Over the half-forward line, Wall sets himself, can't take it. In there is Highwood. He's dumped out of the way and will take the free kick, even Highwood, on the half-back flank for the Tigers. A moment to slow down and uh, just let's look at the scene. Carlton, 14 goals, 4.88, leading Richmond, 8 goals, 7.55 in one of the great reversals of form. And this is the... Uh, greatest performance that Carlton have put up against uh, uh, Richmond in the last 52 years. Highwood from the back line and the ball is now to the centre wing on the outer side getting ready for the mark and Hunt just shifted takes the mark against Ben Waite and Ben Waite puts him down without uh, much ceremony and will pay a 15 yard penalty as a result. But the Blues are finding things so handsome and to their liking that they can afford to give away things like that. Here on the half forward flank it's Hunt now just shifted from centre half back booting the ball up towards the goal square. Ricky McLean waiting behind as Barn knocked it down but not to one of his own players arm. Correction it was it's a Royce Hardy buffeted and pilloted and pinioned picked up now by uh, Vin White. Gee that back line's playing well to the half back line down in front it's Morris. Morris a high kick winner so far in this game and we're not even halfway through tries to thread his way through two and beats them both has a kick at the sticks now falling short behind Sheedy a chance but in front of him it was Ricky McLean and McLean so far without a goal a chance now from a dead set angle to score his first and the Tigers ninth what brilliant football by Morris Tony it was glorious to watch McLean a left footed formerly of Carlton now with the Tigers scores well, I think we can pay a lot of credit to Morris at that time because that was one of the best solo performances of the match. His dazzling turn, he balked and got away from everyone. His kick went across to McLean and Southby. Attention temporarily distracted by the brilliance of Morris. McLean got alone, took the mark only a few yards out. That's McLean's first, and what an opponent he's had in Southby up to date. It looks as though Rex Hunt is uh, in the ruck, or is he at centre-half forward? Well, his opponent is white at the moment, so it could well be half forward flank, couldn't it? It's back in the centre with umpire Della. In comes Peter Jones and hits it out wide, and Sproul's the man who's going to benefit from it. Sproul goes off in front of his opponent, Dixon. Dixon goes to the ground and pushes Sproul down. The free kick will go to Sproul. Jackson plays on as he didn't hear the whistle, but there's no doubt that look at Sproul, Sproul indicating to his teammate Highwood, get it back to me quickly. And Sproul of a slightly balding plate. Comes in and kicks it downfield. Peter Jones is in position. Well done from Carlton. Picked up by Duell. Duell luckily out to Gallagher. Gallagher downfield is going to be Walls and his opponent Richardson. Richardson up in front. Walls does well once again. Almost took a beauty. Not allowed. Picked up by Burke. Burke then boots him out of danger. Gallagher misses what he might have taken. Fights on for it. Hit off the ground. A chance for Royce Hart. Hit by McMillan. Opportunity for Chandler. Chandler goes down but follows on. Could have been a free kick to Chandler. McMillan's with it. Sheedy's in the centre of it. Umpire comes in and indicates that he will bounce. Well, the uh, players virtually taking the ball out of one another's hands there. Half forward flank for the Tigers. Tapped down by Jones again. Comes to Dixon. Dixon tries to sidestep. Could have been uh, penalised. But uh, Burke comes back with a scrappy looking kick towards uh, Sheedy. Sheedy was buffered in the back. Kevin Sheedy on half forward flank takes the kick. Plays on. Looks for McLean. But it's Mackay. All alone in the back line for Carlton to save a promising Richmond attack. The Tigers trail by almost six goals as Mackay boots it down towards centre of the ground and a 15-yard penalty will be applied here against Richmond and it will be 
Mackay to come further, a further 15 yards downfield. 14-4, 88 Carlton, 9-7-61 Richmond, 21 minutes into the second quarter. Mackay is playing his 73rd game in succession for the Blues. You don't often play that many uh, without injury. Here he is from the back line and that 15 yards, kicking to the centre wing and the mark is taken by Carlton again. This is Dixon, another unobtrusive player of the dual uh, uh, mould, but he's always effective. Cuts them down to size to the half forward line, a chance for Sheedy, a kick in midair. He's kicking in danger, I thought, but the umpire calls a play on and Carlton again in possession of the ball. Dixon forward, up goes Hall, then marking like Gazelle. What a good player has Hall been today since he's been on the ball. He's now resting on the half forward flank, which means Chandler's on the ball. And Hall, the half back flanker, were originally selected there, shoots for goal. It's a long, good looking kick, it's a goal. It's a goal. Everything's going right. Number three, Kevin Hall is the man who's clapping his hands enthusiastically, and so rightly so. He's been a very good player, showing tremendous dash around the ground. Carlton, 15-4. That's miraculous goal kicking, and Richmond, 9-7. Peter Jones has contested every cent about, and so has Craig McKellar, but the Carlton plan has worked even better than they would anticipate themselves up to date. Jones goes up uh, through Burke, Hurst has got it, onto his left foot, boots him into attack and Jesselinko will do battle with Clay. Jesselinko wins and won it so easily that time that coach Tom Hafey will now be worried about pullback. That was the clearest and easiest of victories for a brilliant player in Alex Jesselinko. An automatic interstater ever since he's come to Carlton the brilliant full forward kicks for goal, kicked it through. Gesalenko, goal number four. Goal number four to Alex Gesalenko, goal number 16 to Carlton. And what miraculous kicking from uh, in this grand final. 16 goals, four, 100 points to Carlton, two, nine goals, 761. Carlton are winning hands down in the air, 26 marks to Richmond's 10. They've taken the big ones too, Farrell, haven't they? There's Nick giving a message to the runner. He's got a busy day. He's got to kick goals himself. He's kicked three, and he's also coaching. Yes, 10 of Carlton's 16 goals have been kicked by three players. Jesselenko has four, and Walls and Nichols have three each. It's been a marvellous performance, and now it's Bond getting a message from Roger Dean, the former captain. Robert is on. Warming up. Bounce. Right up above the centre circle, and Jones again is uh, unconquerable. The ball's gone Richmond's way, however, and Hunt moved out of position, kicks to the half-forward line where Duell out point hard again. Duell told me before the game, not worried about the first half, and say that again, worried about the second half. I think Hart's the one who's worried. The ball into the half-forward line, and Richmond playing in front that time, and Hunt has taken that mark. Hunt was on the forward line just a few moments ago, and is now on the defence side of the centre circle. Carlton, 16-4, around 100 up, seven minutes before half-time. What a performance. Four goals for every one behind, and now 15 yards for holding up play, so Hunt is now across the centre circle and into attack for his side. Richmond going to the Richmond end, which looks a bit droopy at the moment, a giant kick up to the goal square, it's a 70-yarder behind, nobody waiting for the crumbs, but here comes coming. he's got a couple of goals, Boyanich keeps it back in play, the ball's come out, Hall right to the arms of Carlton, they can't put a, a foot wrong, Chandler gives the hand pass to Robertson, Robertson runs wild on the back line, cuts him the ribbons, kicks the ball out here to Walls, who's got way away from Richardson, another positional move, Walls has dominated at centre half forward, pops it over the top to Robertson, and Robertson now will play on. They don't seem to know what's going on, the Richmond defence. Into the full forward area, they do good, straight to the arms of Gallagher. It's a coach's dream. Carlton are playing as if every move was worked out by computer in advance. Here, from the half forward flank, it's Adrian Gallagher spearing one, right at the sticks and Big Nick, and it's carried through for a point only. Carlton 16-5, they don't get too many points. Richmond 9-7. Well, they were almost toying with the opposition at this stage. Robertson's kicking was absolutely copybook. He was the architect of that attack as he got it to Gallagher. Dick Clay comes in. Clay kicks a long one out wide. Underneath the chance for Hurst. Hurst takes the mark. Well, they're winning in the air and winning hands down. In comes Hurst and boots him into attack. It's Nichols. It's Nichols. Must get a free kick. Not allowed. Play goes on. Big John fights for it, crawls after it, and fighting after it also is Highwood. Alex Jesselenko holding the knee, and the ball is going to be a free kick. It's a free kick for the Tigers, and Highwood to take it. Highwood with a long one, out wide. Well taken, Sheedy. Sheedy plays on quickly. 
on the half-back flank it's Sproul, Sproul out where Duel has taken the points against Hart, uh, Duel turns and twists, recovers brilliantly, gets around Hunt, hand pass dangerous, through the legs of weight it goes, picked up by Sproul, Sproul goes down, hits that there Cummings, Cummings lost the flight of it, Duel has got it back again, lucky free kick I thought. Yes, the only mistake that Duel has made on the half-back line was that foolish hand pass when a long kick would have been the order of the day. It's a long kick from Sproul on this occasion, up towards Balm, but it's Duel again who comes in for Carlton. His kick is marked by McMillan on that half-forward flank out of sight. Or is it coming? Coming. Coming it is. Coming. High drop punt kick right into the 10-yard square. The big men fly. Almost a mark to Carlton coming through with Armstrong. Out to Bartlett it comes. Bartlett can't pick it up. Hotly pressed, falls over at the psychological moment and allows the Carlton defence in. It's Hurst out to wait, wait for Keogh, and Keogh goes forward. He has to kick hurriedly. In comes Francis Burke, the best player for Richmond. Threads the hand pass to Walsh, rolls down towards the full forward zone. Southby comes out in grand fashion and clears it right down towards the centre. Out comes Barry Richardson to take the relieving mark for the Tigers. Richardson at centre half back. He's almost in the centre of the ground, his opponent is Walls, who's been one of the brilliant ones. Underneath it, Carlton Chandler misses an easy one, so does Barm. Back it goes, and here's a chance now for Cumming, Cumming a hand pass. Morris has got the chance for another goal. Misses it. Misses it. Bad luck, Kevin Morris, he's been one of Richmond's better players. He was under pressure that time, he kicked a wonderful leftward goal from an identical position, but there he is, number 38 with the long hair, who couldn't quite make it at that stage, and here comes a magnificent pullback in the person of Master Geoffrey Southby. And it's another glorious kick by Southby, deeper to the out half-back flank this occasion. It's back to Morris, Morris breaks the tackle, puts the boot to the ball, drives it down to the 10-yard square, Southby flies, knocks it away, a chance for Hurst. Southby backed him up in grand style. Look at this champion come through with the ball. Could have been three kicks there, but it comes back to uh, Bartlett. Bartlett fires a goal and puts it offline, but it's just out of the reach of Balm and through for one behind. Well, he went far too early to Neil Balm that time. If he'd stayed down and went at the right time, he could have taken the mark. And Southby, who most people predicted would do so much better against Wake today, has done exactly that up to this stage in the second quarter. There's 28 minutes gone. Southby's kicking out has been copybook as always. A long one out wide. Craig McKellar front position punches when he should have tried to mark. And the free kick is going to Peter Jones. And Peter Jones surprised. Jones has done a wonderful job. Peter Jones playing game number 101, I think it is. Robert Walls, been a brilliant set of half forward. Picked up nicely by McKellar. McKellar of the ugly kick, boots it downfield. Southfield goes a punch and does it well. In front, the chance for McMillan. Takes it away from Hurst. He follows on and he's met solidly but takes it. Here's a good bump, Gallagher. And, and there he comes Brown. Brown will shoot for goal. Great football. Great football by Paul Brown. He was under extreme pressure. He kicked very hurriedly and kicks a great goal. And kick number 12 for Paul Frow in a scintillating display. He was had every chance of missing that goal. He, he looked to be going far too fast to kick it, but threaded it through from a difficult angle. 10 goals, 9.69. Richmond, 16-5, 101. As McKellar wins the tap down, but it goes to Robertson. Robertson left puts it right up to Walls, and the mark is missed by Walls. But Jezalinko breaks the tackle, lines it up, and he's put it through. Three, six, four. Well, I'd suggest, though, that there might be another move very imminent. They've got to do something about Jezalinko. Clay should have the pace to stay with him, but he hasn't shown the skill. He's kicked five goals to half time and coach Tom Hyphy will run out of moves. There it is, 17-5 to 10-9. What, what a fantastic scoring effort, you know. 27 goals kicked in about uh, 60 minutes of football. That's tremendous, isn't it? This is the way that the public love it. It's wonderful grand final football and Jesselenko has once again been a star. Big Peter Jones, Gallagher a good rover. Boots it out wide, Robert Wall set a half forward. Richardson goes up with him. Well played Chandler. Here comes Jackson. jackson got it, threads through the pack. Off he goes. Puts it down and Voynich in front will mark. Voynich is off. That was a bad kick of Jackson's. Voynich boots it out wide. Sproul in front on the chest. And Sproul's been a good player despite the fact he's been moved. He sends a drop kick down for looking for Barry... Re oh, no, for Hunt. Behind the pack, here's a chance now. But lucky Carlton. Back to Hurst it goes. Hurst boots it out towards Dixon. And Dixon is miles in front of his opponent, Sproul. Gets it, turns out of trouble, slips. 
got time to hand pass, which he does well, out to Kevin Hall, and Kevin Hall's a speedster, will have his second long shot for goal. John Nichols, thank you. John Nichols, no doubt. Beautiful football hall, and big Nick. There's only one expression lurking in the goal square. 16 stone 7, a potential dynamite and danger, and boy next left him. In comes the big fellow, he's kick three. In league football, there haven't been many straighter kicks than John Nick. This is a difficult angle. Bang. Thank you. Number four. And Carlton are bolting away. Completely up, right? Richmond at this point of time, Carlton. There's big John Nichols. He must be a, a very happy coach. As Carlton move on to 18-5. What fantastic kicking. 113 points to Richmond, 10-9. 69, and it's pretty near half-time. We've had about... 33 minutes of play and Carlton are winning hands down practically all over the ground, certainly in the air and certainly in the rough. And they've kicked 10-1 for the quarter, Ken, as Richmond get the tap down here, but it's Armstrong who takes it away. He drives it up towards half-forward flank towards Keo. Keo traps it beautifully, ducks the head and runs in towards open goal. John Nichols is back in the 10-yard square and it's a goal from Keo. Offline one point and had he kicked it 10 yards earlier, there was a lay down Mazir that Nichols would have marked it. Yeah, quite right. If so he didn't, if he didn't, Jezelenko would because Je Jezelenko was completely unattended to. Well, they're absolutely ripping holes in the uh, Richmond defence, Carlton, as they move on to 18 6, 114 points to Richmond 10 9, 69. Dick Clay, a very worried Dick Clay, undoubtedly kicks out wide. Great leap behind there by Hall, picked up nicely by Morris, left foot to downfield, in front Hunt. Nicely done, Waite. Waite follows on and wins it very well. Could have taken a free kick, I thought. He will. And rightly so. Rightly so. Look at Ben Waite. He's in trouble. He's in trouble. Out to duel and Waite's calling for the trainers. Underneath it, Gallagher takes a good mark. And Waite, I'm sure, will be off. Bad luck for Carlton. Gallagher looking for Robert Walls. And Robert Walls and Richardson go, Robert Walls! One hand they're doing it now. And there's the siren for half time. And at half time, there's the scoreboard. Carlton, 18 6, 114 points to Richmond, 10 9, 69. Puts uh, Carlton really in the box seat. 19 9, 123 points to Richmond, 11 10, 76. And we're about 10 minutes into the, the third quarter. Well, the only thing that marred Wall's game two weeks ago was bad kicking today. He's kicked four goals, one. Back in centre. Jones again, but it's. Uh, Stewart who gets the tap down to Dixon of Carlton his long hand pass intercepted by Walsh who drives it right up to the 10 yard square, a man handling going on here, Hunt has the chance, tries to boot it through, there's three Richmond players there and Barm puts through goal number 4 for Neil Barm well there were three Richmond players there it looked as though they'd all overrun the ball but the quick thinking big fellow Barm puts it through for, for Richmond's fourth goal so it's 12 10, 82 Richmond, 19 9. Fabulous kicking, Carlton 123. Well, can the Tigers come back? Well, they're certainly trying hard. Rex Hunt almost for plumbed that one. Baum got him out of trouble. Here's Sproul. Sproul then breaks out and drives it down the half forward line. Underneath it, Hart. Great mark. Play on, Great mark. All oh, play on, says the umpire. Underneath it, Lucas. That was a bad decision. Here's a chance now for the umpire calls the equaliser and the free kick goes to Morris. But the umpire is closer than us, but certainly from here, one could not understand how that could have been play on. Morris comes in, 70 yards out from goal, puts it down the 10 yard square. David Mackay's the leaper. He was feet above the pack, and as you saw, it actually took it on his chest above the pack. A fantastic mark by young David Mackay. Mackay elects to kick it to the grandstand side, the members' side. Up flies McKellar, knocked away by Jones, racing to the boundary line, throw in coming up in the members' pocket for my, Richmond. My word, uh, Jones has frustrated McKellar all day long. Jones and McKellar in ruck again. McKellar wins the front position, but Jones gets the tap down with the left hand. In comes uh, Sproul, he's dispossessed of the ball, picked up by Lucas. Driven down towards uh, centre wing position. Highwood flies with Jackson, comes off hands. In there is Dixon. So too is uh, Richmond's uh, Richardson. He puts boot to ball up towards half forward. Up flies Jones, almost puts it in one hand. Hart is there. Puddles it on in front of him. Free kick to Roy's Hart. 
holding the man and Royce Hart is within scoring distance and he doesn't miss many from this position. A goal here to Richmond would be invaluable. I thought a 15-yard penalty was on there too. Oh, he took some buffeting. One, two, three he took that time and easily could have been boarded 15 yards. Hart, who was kicking magnificently at training on Thursday night, here's a test of it, comes in and kicks it high and kicks it straight and puts it straight through. There's the hallmark of class. Number four, the most brilliant set of half forward certainly that I've seen, who's been kept out of the game for the first half by Duel, but he's almost irrepressible. Can he be kept out for the second half? That's the uh, Hart's first goal of the match. And Richmond coming back into it a little. Richmond 13 10, 88 for Carlton, 99 123, and the Richmond supporters are really coming alive. Peter Jones up again and beats McKellar out past Walsh. Opportunity for Jones once again, the long hand pass to Robertson. Robertson, you've got to be quick. Boots it over Jackson's head down towards the pocket. It's out of bounds, and Carlton swing into attack. Half forward flank. Out of side of the ground. Punt road goal is their objective. Nichols comes on to take one of his few staunts at Ruckmer. In front of McKellar he is. Does it beautifully down two to Gallagher. Gallagher free kick, I thought. It is. Free kick to Adrian Gallagher. And Stephen Highwood has got a lot to say, but there's no doubt the tackle was too high. Gallagher so often bunches himself down and so often comes out with a free kick. He's a long way out from goal. Gallagher is not a long kick on the half forward flank he's about 50 yards out the distance might trouble him it does trouble him it's out of bounds on the ball and the free kick will go to the Tigers mark and off he goes and he'll be brought back to kick over the mark and uh, we'll wait on Bella it could even be no it's not going to be a penalty but look very quiet again today in the last two final appearances 15 and 13 kicks Kevin Bartlett puts it into play down a half back flank Ooh, almost a mark to Burke, not allowed, hand pass coming out towards um, Chandler, Chandler now at centre half forward, drives it up to Big John Nichols, flying high, waiting down there is uh, Gallagher coming through the pack, the free kick going, Carlton's way is it? Kicking in danger. And Dixon. the free kick is going to Dixon. Dixon. Oh, that was a bad kick in danger and uh, number 43 is the disconsolate man Ray Boyanich and Bill Della smiling at Boyanich and Boyanich has got nothing to smile about Dixon the winger typical of league football today he's only about 25 yards out from goal kicks for goal kicks very badly and out of bounds Wayne Walsh to uh, take the free kick for Richmond in the last line of defence comes out on the Carlton's right half forward line. Chance there for Burke. Burke can't quite get to the ball. He's smothered very quickly. Big pack developing as Armstrong comes to the ball. He's tackled. I thought it was over his shoulder. Play goes on as uh, Richmond emerge with the ball. Get it up towards centre half forward. Sproul is racing to it. So too is Hunt. Uh, Hart rather. Hart gets to the ball first. Caught by Bill. Gets in a hand pass. It comes up to uh, towards uh, Boyanich who shepherds off to allow Sproul to have a shot at goal. But he's way off line with it and it goes out of play. Rather, that was uh, Baum who was shepherding off there. Free kick will be taken by South. Richmond coming back hard in the middle stages of this third quarter. Carlton leading 99 to 13 10. 45 points did Richmond lead by at half time as Southby, whose new opponent is Hunt, kicks his usual 65 to 70 yard looking for Jones. Hart's going to go with him. Hart got there first. Gallagher, a clever rover, screws it back about 30 yards. Armstrong underneath it. Bad luck, Shooty. Over the line. No, it is over the line now. As Duel and Shooty clash for it, it's out of bounds. Out of bounds between centre wingers. Half forward flank grandstand side with Richmond in attack. Jones and McKellar once again. Jones cleverly done. Beautifully out to Armstrong. On to Gallagher. Gallagher then an awkward kick, but it's beautifully done. Walls has got it. Take your time, Robert Walls. He's off. Kicks it cleverly out to Robertson. Here's the long kicker. He's steady. Drop kick it'll be, skims it, Nickel, Nickel. It's a mark, it's a mark, and it's Robertson who kicks that perfect skimming drop kick that went like a bullet, and the big giant was lurking in the forward pocket once again. He will now kick his fifth goal. He spells danger all the time, doesn't he? As soon Robert as that ball is, yep. Shouldn't miss it, uh, Nichols. He's got uh, four. four. This should be goal number five. 
on its way and there's no question about it straight through the middle and, uh, Carlton have posted their 20th goal what a fantastic kicking performance 29 to Richmond 13 10 and we're about 18 minutes into the third quarter and the messages are coming out right left and center to the Richmond players Boynich is the recipient of the game, Ken. Yep, their defence has been completely rattled all day long. Serge Silvani said that Nichols would kick five goals, but I don't think he meant it would kick them in the, the, at the 19-minute mark of the third quarter. Incidentally, Barnes on the ball for the first time. Barnes, but it's uh, Burke who gets the tap down. In there is Hurst, he loses it, comes back to Hart. Hart breaks clear, he spells danger now for... Uh, Carlton boots it up to the forward pocket. Southby races to it but can't gather it in. Boundary throw in, forward pocket at the scoreboard end. 20 goals, 9, 129. Carlton to 13, 10, 88, Richmond. Bam, on the ball with Mackay. Mackay nudges him out, gets the tap down. Gallagher has the chance, screws that kick back in characteristic style. It's not going 10 yards. Under it is uh, O'Connell. If he's going to be paid it, it didn't look 10 yards to me. Doug Hayward. 20 yards in the air. About, Five, nine, about yeah. nine along the ground. Yeah, about nine metres, no more. <laughs> In comes O'Connell. O'Connell with his right foot, boots it down, looking for Duel. Up goes Peter Jones, a grand effort it was. Armstrong once again. Robert Walls is danger, always. Been the best player on the ground. Gathers it in. Left foot's it cleverly across. Jessalinko. The forward line is working like a smoothly oiled machine. Jessalinko. The long kick will be Jessalinko's choice, looking for captain coach Nichols. Down it goes, Nichols front position. Up he goes, and Boynich battles with him that time. Walsh is with it, Boynich gets it, kicks it out wide, and Lucas is the only player there on the boundary line. Lucas will now turn and kick to Nichols. He kicks to Jackson. He could have kicked to either, and it was Jackson in the best position, and Lucas could not have done it better. Beautifully done, and Sidney Jackson has got a shot for goal from about 25 yards out. Simply amazing, Doug, how many times we see these Carlton players loose an attack. Here's Jackson, 20 yards out, lining up the goal. It's on its way. The goal umpire doesn't move. It's a goal to Carlton. 21 on the board now. 21 line to Richmond, 13, 10. And it does seem at this point of time that uh, the Blues have got this game sewn up. I think that was Jackson's first goal. It was. The goal kicker so far, incidentally, the main goal kickers for Carlton. Nichols has kicked five, Jezelenko five, and four to Robert Ball. Back with umpire Dillon. In the centre, up go the big fellows. Jones brilliantly done once again. A chance now for Richmond through Morris. Morris loses it, battling for it, and down he goes. Goes shooty, fighting and struggling. Armstrong, another kick. Boots it out. Robert Ball's front position as always. Bounces over his head. Barry Richardson through comes Bond, and the left hand bounces off. Off he goes again and then boots it out wide looking for Shooty. Over Shooty to David Mackay. No value, Shooty. No value at all in that. A player reported in one of the earlier finals for doing a similar thing. And he got four weeks. Well, not even 15 yards. That's surprising. And now Mackay takes the kick. Mackay down towards the centre wing position. Two Richmond players fly, spoil one another, coming through his part, but he was held and he'll take the free kick. He was lucky. But left puts it up towards centre-half forward. Mackay again, but from behind, it's Hunt. Pulls it into the Tigers, and he's within scoring distance. They trail by eight goals at the moment. Richmond and badly needs this goal from the boot of Hunt. On its way, and dead through the centre. Rex Hunt, goal number one to the Richmond number five. And there he is, moved from centre-half back, completely outclassed by Walls, up to full forward, and kicked his first goal 20 minutes into the third quarter. Well, the kicking has been fantastic in this game. Uh, Carlton, from 30 scoring shots, have 21 goals on the board. Richmond, from 24, have 14. Policeman trying to recover the ball. There's been a great wastage in league circles today. There's Roger Dean talking to, uh, to Ian Stewart, who was brought on after half-time for Richmond. Haven't seen a great deal of him so far. Ball back with the boundary umpire. Richmond have made a lot of positional changes, but uh, most of them to no avail. There's another one just happened at this moment. Stewart goes into the centre of the ground and limping out to half forward flank goes Shooty. His opponent will be Hall and Roger Dean, fit as ever, running back to centre wing. Peter Jones will clash with McKellar, even Stephen. Could have been a free kick to Carlton, I felt, and Dixon will take it. Cleo will take it. 
to you. Loose man out there. Thank you, says Lucas. It's mine. Lucas, a long run pursued by Walsh. Walsh will catch him. Lucas turns and twists. It's over the line, out of bounds. And it's between centre wing and half forward flank with the Blues in attack. In ruck, Jones again with McKellar. Jones showing a tremendous amount of energy. A clever tap down to Robertson. Robertson up towards Jackson, but it's knocked away by Highwood. Into the hands of Stewart. Stewart right puts it down to where Armstrong just misses the mark. Coming to it is Duell. Cleverly taps it across to Dixon. Quickly onto the boot to Jackson. Just out of his reach. Coming through is Highwood around the neck to Highwood. And he'll take the free kick. And just points the finger saying that will do. And the hand pass. Quickly out towards Bartlett. Bartlett strongly tackled by Jackson. Long kick towards half forward. Coming, takes the mark. Plays on. Swings it around towards full forward. Waiting is Barnes. Coming through it there is uh, Southby. And cleverly puts it through. And out of danger for one behind. Well, have you ever seen such pace as Southby's that time? I, I thought they could have been a free kick to Barnes there, Dave. Easily. Quite easily. Yeah, easily. Southby with tremendous pace was the man who saved it. But my word, there could have been one there now, Southby. <coughs> who once again is back to his brilliant best and kicking out perfectly, look out wide looking for Jones, Jones goes up and cleverly over the back of the pack and here's Stewart, Stewart's going to be shooting by two of them, he does it very nicely onto his right foot which doesn't suit him, it's a bad kick underneath of the chances there for Sproul, didn't look too anxious about that one, well played Hart, out to Barn, Barn fumbles, out to Bartlett, Bartlett will shoot for goal, takes a long time and kicks it one behind. Bad luck Kevin Bartlett, this was an awkward one to pick up, he fumbled, and there's Baum and David Mackay in unfriendly embrace. I think Bartlett has been Richmond's biggest kick getter today, or pretty close to it. 17 kicks to Bartlett. Yes, he's still, uh, despite the fact that uh, we've been quoting some statistics again and I, against him, I think they're a bit doubtful, those ones that Thor have been quoting. I think he got a lot more than 13 last week. Here comes Southby. Grandstand side is his target all the time. Jones is his target all the time. Dixon will take it, and Dixon's been a good player. He's on half-back play. He can't find anybody to kick to. There's no one in there. There's always Walls the chance. Walls and Richardson go. Behind is Gallagher. Gallagher screws it out wide. Underneath it, the chance is there for... Oh, great mark! Free kick for Chandler Richmond, pushed him out. Bad luck, Chandler, and the free kick will go to the Tigers. Wayne Walls it is. Boots it up to half-forward. Jones flies off the hands of the pack again. Richmond players fighting for it. Bartlett comes out, kick number 18, up towards full forward. Bit of pushing and shoving going on here. Coming across the back is Mackay. Cleverly done Mackay, and he gets them out of danger with a wonky looking kick, but he's backed up well there by Southby. Southby ducks the head, holding the man. The Jim Southby did not have the ball, and Southby will take the free kick. 21-9, 135, Carlton, 14-12, 96, Richmond. Richmond's tackling at times a little bit indiscriminate. Not nearly as good as Carlton. Southby, a magnificent kick, and this is no exception. It comes to the centre of the ground. Jackson comes from behind. Oh, he nearly took the mark, too. Stewart dives in. However, it's Armstrong who gets hold of it. Play very congested as Bartlett emerges with the ball. He's trying to lift the Tigers at this point of time. Gets the ball forward. There's Hunt setting himself for it. Also Mackay. It's knocked down a chance here for Baum. Baum turns under his left boot. Has a snapshot. By what it was close. It's there. A goal to the Tigers. Goal number five to Baum. And uh, Richmond's 15th goes on the board. Calvin 21-9 to Richmond 15-12 and the Tigers are making a desperate recovery in this third quarter which has been in progress about 25 minutes. So 15-12 now, 102 points to Calvin 21-9, 135. Roger Dean again. In the centre it's Jones, up he goes, behind the pack Lucas has the chance, he's met solidly. In comes O'Connell, uh, cursed it is, Hurst onto his left foot, screws it out beautifully to Gallagher. Gallagher's got tons of time, he can go for the run and off he goes. Adrian Gallagher can go further, he can go further still. He's going to look for Nichols. Out wide it goes and up goes Robert Walls. In front, Jessalinko. A great hand pass to Keogh. Keogh has left foot snap for goal. It's the goal of the match. The goal of the match from uh, Keogh and John Nichols down to congratulate him and what a splendid goal that was it's his third he's been one of Carlton's very good players and the Blues can't do anything wrong goal number 22 now 22-9 to Richmond 15-12 <coughs> and look at that uh, elated group of uh, Carlton supporters 
They'll have to be tonight, don't they? <laughs> well now, can Richmond come back with a quick goal? They certainly need it. And a bounce. No one gets the decisive tap down. Richmond try to take it away. Jones in there thwarting every opportunity. And Bardella will ball it up again. 39 points the difference in Carlton's favour. Richmond have whittled it down from 45 to 39 in this quarter. Tap down by Morris. Coming through is Chandler. Oh, Hurst it was. Got it across to uh, Duell. Duell up towards uh, centre half forward. Off the hands of the pass. It's Gallagher. A long kick towards Jezelenko, but chipping in is Barry Richardson to stem the tide for the Tigers. At centre half back, Barry Richardson. It was a bad kick that one. Richardson kicks it down. Gallagher, thank you. On his chest. Gallagher between centre and centre half forward. Nobody at home except Armstrong. Armstrong was nearly going to go off and luckily did not. Armstrong now. Very congested Carlton forward line at this stage. Looking for Big John. He goes up and hits it over the back and Walls is going to kick it through. He does. Robert Walls kicks his fifth. And that, in my book, was a big as well. And a big hand. possibly happen and there's Carlton's 23rd goal on the board 23-9 147 to Richmond 15-12 102 and the Blues look to have it sewn up Nichols only had six kicks and he's almost one of the best on the ground Peter Jones again to Chandler Robert Walls will mark it on his chest thank you and Walls takes another one he's completely thrashing whoever they put against him Barry Richardson's done no better than Hunt Jackson free kick to Jackson Free kick to Jackson, made position perfectly, got in the front position, went for the chest mark, was pulled out by the shoulder, and Sid Jackson will shoot for goal. He's kicked one, and this mammoth score of Carlton's 23 goals, 9, 147 points. It's Jackson, number five, shooting for goal from about 25 to 30 yards out. Glorious kick, this ex-West Australian. Punt kick, straight as a die. That's his second, and Carlton's 24. They just can't do a thing wrong, uh, Carlton. They're ripping holes in the Richmond defence, completely outplaying them, and the uh, Richmond defenders are obviously very rattled. 24 goals, that's a pretty tall score. And we're only, uh, well, we're pretty near the end of the third quarter, but 24 goals after three-quarter time is a fantastic score. And three goals in three minutes by Carlton when it looked as though Richmond might be coming back into the game. Jones again, but it's uh, Barn who gets the tap down. Dixon takes it away to Walls. Walls using his bolt well. In there is uh, Gallagher, but coming to it is the Bond of Richmond. He taps it on in front of him. Out towards the uh, boundary line it goes. Bond has to get rid of it quickly. Dixon in there contesting. Bond was held. He'll take the free kick. And a little bit of scuffling going on there, but Bond will take the free kick, undoubtedly from that... Uh, Infringement of being held when not in possession. Bond centre wing on grandstand side. Boots it up towards half forward. Almost a mark for Stewart. Coming through his Keo, Been a grand player for, uh, for Carlton. Jackson wide on his own. And Jackson is giving high with the run around in this third quarter. Jackson looking for uh, Nichols. Tries to run on with it. Good his play but breaks the tackle. Good play Highwood. Good play. Smothered Jackson's attempt. Comes out to Clay, Clay gets it across towards Bartlett, but in there is Chandler, hand pass out to Gisolenko, a short kick, tries to find Jackson, but it was beautifully done, but just a little astray and out of bounds on the ball. Yes, they're fooling around a little bit at this stage, and that was very bad football. As it goes downfield, waiting for it, Peter Jones and Hart, well punched out by Jones, where goes Keogh? Keogh won't fool around, look at the kick, perfectly done, perfectly done to Walls, and Walls is absolutely dominant. He's got too much pace for Richardson. Doug is uh, completely outpacing him. And there's the kick by Walls, looking for Big Nichols. Nichols being held, I think, will get the free kick. He will. He has been held out, no two ways about it. And Big John Nichols is coming in for goal number six, I think, or seven. Now, number five is kicked already, Ken. Good, right. coming in for goal number six. He couldn't miss it. Dead in front. Coming about 15 yards before he even kicks the ball. 
There's the kick on its way, and it's straight through. Goal 25 to Carlton. They're certainly raining goals for the last three or four minutes. They've posted four in almost equal time. Move on to 25-9. 159 points to Richmond, 15-12, 102. And this is certainly a boil over. It's certainly a boil over. And the reason for the boil over has been, or uh, well, one of the reasons, just kicked that goal. Playing his 295th game was John Nichols and has kicked six goals in the grand final up to date. As the umpire bounces and up they go once again. Down it goes and kicked by Duell. A nice hand pass by Balm to Bartlett. Bartlett boots them into attack looking for Rex Hunt. South is with him all the way. Good mark. Taken by McKellar who's resting. And is favouring his left leg too, Doug. A little McKellar. bit of by play behind the play too. Yes. Yep, just near the centre of the ground. There it is. Now then, let's concentrate on... Uh, McKellar as he shoots for goal, and this one is offline, a behind only, when the Tigers badly needed a goal. One behind to Richmond, 15-13 now to Carlton, 25-9. Tempest a little bit frayed out there in the centre. Number 10, Kevin Sheedy was in the midst of the Tempers and frayed there as Southby comes in and kicks his usual immaculate punt kick. Barm and Jones go for it. Barm got there first, couldn't hold it. Sproul's got it, well bumped out. Nicely taken by Chandler, who's been a good player. Beautifully smothered by Bartlett. Bartlett's going to shoot for goal and kicks another behind as he was pushed after he kicked it. Looked for a free kick. The umpire disagrees and there's one point only when Bartlett was hoping for another try. 25-9, 159 and Richmond 15-14, 104. And that's the highest score in the grand final. Essendon uh, in 1946 kicked 150 points and Richmond have 159 on the board. I remember that day when Whopper, when Whopper Lane did so much for, for Essendon. In front, the chance is there now for McMillan. McMillan across, O'Connell can't take it. Coming goes out in front of him. Out comes Southby to assist as he does so often. O'Connell cleverly back nicely to Hunt. Hunt will shoot for goal, but kicks it right across the face of goal and it just squeezes through for one behind. The Cow player on the ground, Doug? Yes, on the ground and a lot of pain out there. And now, is it, looks like Dixon, who's been a good yes. player. Standing beside him is the well-known number 10, Shooty. Short pass to Duel is easily done. Duel takes the mark from Southby. Very rarely does Southby short pass on the back line. When he does, it is with success. Here's another one to Peter Jones. And the Jones boys had a picture. Three-quarter time. For the wing, bumps the pick up. He doubles back, but the ball's not there any longer. Hurst wraps him up. Sheedy's got the free kick and there's some fight in the game. The hand pass goes to Bartlett. Bartlett's been outstanding for Richmond. 22 kicks. Up onto the half forward line. Knock away. Negative duel into the arms of Marty McMillan. A hand pass under pressure goes past coming. It's been picked up by Barn, who gives it to Richardson. Into the goals he goes and scores. That's goal number three to Barry Richardson. And he did it despite a very, very stern tackle and the man jumping up and down in the one spot was Neil Barm, who's been the outstanding forward for the Tigers. Barm has kicked five, and that's Richardson's third. Darrell Cummings kicks for two. They're the major kick getters for the Tigers. It's Kevin Hall walking back beside Richardson. Hall started off on the ball and played particularly well. Now back at half-back flank. In come the rucks. It's uh, Roberts on the ball, tackled. Picked up there and driven downfield. And in front, there could have been a free kick that time to McMillan. There is, and McMillan takes the free. McMillan, half forward flank. Paul Richmond to drive them into attack. A long punt kick right up towards Barn. Mackay from behind, punches it away. Keo has the chance. Comes to it well, shepherded nicely by Dixon. Looking for Duell out on the centre wing position. Duell taps it cleverly ahead. Down towards uh, Walls. Walls taps it in turn cleverly to Jackson. And a long kick coming up to Big John Nichols. Up he goes and can't take the mark. Across the back is Highwood. In there is Gallagher. Gallagher meets Highwood solidly. Highwood eventually has to travel it over the line and out of play. In the forward pocket. But Umpire kick. Della has picked out the free kick and it will go to the half-back flanker of Richmond. Eight goals, Carlton's way still. What an enormous lead. Richmond in defence, Carlton therefore into attack, and the ball coming back to the half-forward line. Robertson up in the middle of the pack, can't take it. This is Wayne Walsh, was he in possession? The other number seven, and Lucas grabbed him as 19th man. The hand pass has gone effectively to Bartlett, under the half-forward line. Another kick for Bartlett, number 23. Down it comes to Cumming, Darrell coming from Mildura, knocks it back on its tracks, nobody to pick it up except Southby of the opposition side, and he didn't want that. The ball into the centre of the ground, nearly a mark to Dixon, one of the best players in this Carlton side. Here's Bond, one of the fastest men in league football, look at him, green down the ground. Three bounces, over the top, falling short. 
short into the goal square. Balm couldn't pick it up. The ball's gone out here towards Sheedy. Sheedy's had about 15 positions on the field. Locked into the goal square by Balm. Stewart puts it through. Great football, great football by Bond as he went, and that was the quickest man on the side, as Tony said. He absolutely bolted downfield and under pressure. Over the back from Barn was superb football. Stewart got it, just dribbled it through, and Richmond are not going to give up. But they've got a long way to go. Up back in the centre with Della. In comes the big whale to do battle. Neither looks like it. Peter Jones gets another go at it. Picked up by Keogh. Across it goes Walsh is underneath it. Here comes Jackson. Jackson sport by Lucas Francis Burke. At centre half back will boot the Tigers into attack. And he boots them in with a long one out wide. Dill goes out there with it. Can't take it. Where's Royce Hart at this stage? Dill has got the ball. Gets a long hand pass cleverly out to Dixon. Dixon looks to be on one leg at one stage. He boots it downfield. Underneath it the mark is missed by Hart. And Hart then recovers nicely. Turns onto his left foot. He's on the halfback flank as the captain as he boots it downfield. Underneath it's a big leap and a great mark taken by McMillan. McMillan is off. On a long low drop kick up towards Barm. It's over his head. Mackay takes it. He plays on. Halfback drives it right up towards centre half forward. Jackson getting under it, but the big whale is there. Tops it forward, but intercepted there by Armstrong. He in turn up towards the full forward zone. Burnage taps it down. Gallagher has it. Swings around, looks for Jezelenko, and the mark to Jezelenko, or the free kick. It's Jezelenko's, whatever way you look. And Robert Walls bounced it through as well. <laughs> but the mark, or the free kick, as you say, Thorold is there. Such an exciting player. Born in Hungary, came to Australia at the age of three, to Canberra, and now into the big-time league. Magnificent player. And here he is, all set for his sixth. Jezelenko, five goals so far. The leading Carlton goal kicker for three years, 69, 70 and 71. And he kicked 115 goals in a memorable uh, season of 1970. Ready for number six in the grand final. He'll bring the house down if he puts this one through. Just the player to do it. Straight out in front to the scoreboard stand, which is stacked with excited spectators. Jezza moves in. Rip up. And there's the man the man of the moment, the man of the final series. There's Gallagher talking to Nichols. And Nichols, even at this stage, is not going to let the team relax. This is the highest scoring grand final ever. Essendon held the record with 150 points in 1946, kicking 22-18, and before that, Melbourne, 148 points, kicking 21-22 in 1939. Roberts is on the ball now as he comes in to do battle with Jones. Jones has taken every one for the match for Carlton. Here's a chance now for Keogh. Keogh then boots it out wide, looking down there for Lucas. Lucas gets a favourable bounce but misses it. A chance now for Highwood. Highwood gathers in on halfback flank grandstand side. Sends it downfield. Underneath it, the chance is there for Carlton's Jones. And what a great mark it was. Well, Big Pete has often been great humour about this big fellow, but he's one of Carlton's heroes today. And I'm sure all the Tasmanian supporters will be delighted. Peter Jones, another one of the likeable giants of football, is a centre half back. Down it goes, looking for the winning Robert Walls. Walls decides to punch it. Lucas comes in. Jesselenko's there. Look at Jesselenko. He is blocked. He's gone again. He overran it for once. Robert gets it out. Roberts gets it out and it's booted downfield where Francis Burke will do battle. Armstrong, the big leaper. Behind the pack, it's McMillan. McMillan's hand pass to Walsh. Walsh is about centre wing and off he goes. It's a good kick and he kicks under pressure. Out wide it goes. Here comes Stewart. Stewart gathers in nicely. Goes for the run. Turns onto his left foot. Screws it back to Morris. Morris and Richardson can take their pick. He'll take it. Hall! A beautiful interception and Hall has gone downfield. Hunt Hart has the chance now to drive it forward for Richmond. He does up towards half forward. O'Connell in the way. The Carlton defence supreme today in every facet of the game. And there we see Keogh in trouble on the half forward flank for Carlton. But it's back with uh, with O'Connell on the half back line. He drives it over the centre. Roberts flies and takes the mark unopposed. A long hand pass to. Morris it is, Morris on the half forward flank runs into trouble, has to hand pass it out towards Sheedy, Sheedy lines it up and he's put it through the back and a goal to Richmond well the space saving effort from Kevin Sheedy who's had one of those forgettable days, he'd want to forget it as quickly as he possibly could and there he is in camera 18-15-123 Richmond 26-9-165 Carl seven goals the difference 
it's over by the shouting so they say but there's plenty of shouting still left at this in this huge crowd at the mcg carlton have broken the hoodoo which has hung over their head since 1920 taken out of the center by big brian roberts six feet six and nearly 16 stone they carry on with the good work from the half forward line over the half forward line mcmillan straight off the front of the pack running into an open goal, goal. Number two to Marty McMillan and the Richmond fans are coming to voice again and they richly deserve some sort of help because Carlton have looked so good today. 26-9 to 19-15. Actually you can see the scoring shots have been pretty much Richmond's way but Carlton have looked the better side all day. 165 to 129 is back in the centre with umpire Della. Chandler's back on the ball. Let's see if Big Peter Jones is going to take this one. Nick's on the ball. The captain coach is on. A chance now for Hart, who's on the half-back line. He tries to break away and fights and struggles and does it very well. And Hart puts him into attack with a long left footer down over the head of Barn. Up goes David Mackay. Here's a chance for Bond. Bond kicks off the ground. And it's another goal. It's another goal. Beautiful football as he kicked off the ground and through it goes. Well, the goal. Richmond are back in it. The goal kickers for the Richmond side, five to Baum, three to Richardson, two each to McMillan, and now Sheedy with Cummings. 57 points, the Blues led by a three-quarter time, and Richmond have whittled it down to 30 points. The highest scoring grand final ever, a feast of goals knocked down by, uh, by uh, Brian Roberts, straight to the rover, good play. But the kicks it to McMillan, who did the damage a while ago. McMillan gets it off his shoulder, right to the arms of Southby. Didn't want that. Southby kicks the ball right back on its track, plus 20 yards. Up to Rex Hunt, appealing for the mark. The play on, according to the umpire, and his word counts. It was Gallagher kicking the ball to the half-forward line, bringing Jezelenko and Clay into the play, but not for much longer. 26 goals versus 20. Five goals separating them because of the point situation, and we've played for eight minutes into the final quarter. Carlton, 10 with finals experience. Richmond, 13 players with finals experience. Carlton, breaking a hoodoo exist in existence since 1920. Roberts, too much strength for Jones that time. Booted out towards the half-back flank of Richmond. Picked up nicely and driven down by Sproul. In front, the tumbling mark by Richardson. Well, Hart's been moved away from centre-half forward. John Nichols, for the first time, has come on the ball. Barry Richardson in the centre of the ground. Boots Richmond into attack out wide. Underneath it is Dool, pushed out by Shooty, I thought. And the free kick will go to do Oh, and down they go. Shooty's down. The umpire comes in, and he might take that away. No, he speaks to Shooty. Shooty got the first one in, Doug. And Andrew Pick says, serves you right. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't doubt that we probably agree. And there's the quiet man, Bruce Dool, <laughs> who's got a perceptible smile. Only a half one, because then he smiles about once a season and probably twice tonight. The quiet man who looks like the wild man from Borneo. As he certainly does, and he's put Royce Hart right out of the game. As Dool comes in and sends a long one down towards where Royce Hart, his ex-opponent, is flying for it. Hunt was there first. Hunt tries a long hand pass out to Burke. Burke then boots him into attack and well taken by Kevin Hall. Kevin Hall at centre halfback. Played a dashing game on the halfback flank. Hall, Luck Grove early in the game, drives it now out to the outer side. From behind, it was a chance there for Carlton, but it comes to Roberts, who's very slow with it. Threads the hand pass eventually to Bartlett. Bartlett's been uh, great since uh, quarter time. Moves it up to the half forward flank, the forward pocket. From behind is a chance for Richmond. But Stewart has it, lines it up, puts it across the face of goal. And almost a mark there to McMillan. Or, or to uh, Cummings. In there is O'Connell for Carlton. Plays it on in front of him in grand style. Has the chance now to hook it out of trouble and down towards centre wing. Burke, all alone, has time to steady. Sends the hand pass overhead to Morris. Morris in turn, runs out of, gets out of trouble. His kick is smothered nicely by Southby. It comes back to Walsh. Walsh now drives it right down to the goal line. Will it go through for one point? Yes, it does. And that brings uh, Richmond's score now to 20-16-136. To Carlton, 26-9-165. Carlton will think that the performance of their side in this game is only poetic justice because for 13 of the 22 weeks of uh, in-season play they were on top of the list. Richmond were top only once but they were second top for nine weeks. It's a long season, the longest the league, uh, league season in history and as we've said during this quarter the highest ever scoring grand final. Out to the halfback line from the fullbacks boot and it's a Carlton mark not allowed it's a play on and not behind the ear for Chandler didn't like that they hurt. A fistful of knuckle dusters and Chandler gets the free kick. That'll cheer him up. Here from the halfback flank. 
Chandler. A success in this final series when it was not expected he'd make the side. Behind the play wall, what a trump. Into the full forward zone, they're back into attack. But way out into no man's land, no real estate there. And a throw in to come up between the half forward flank and the full forward pocket. With the Blues going in grand style, keeping Richmond at bay, despite the Tigers' every valiant effort. A throw in coming up in the full forward pocket. 26 goals to 20, but because of the points, only five goals separating them, but that's a big margin. Behind the play, Bartlett. Bartlett, a good kick winner. Desperate all the time. Keo tackling him, and a great player for the Carlton side today. Bounce up coming up, and it's umpire Della right in command. And Bartlett talking vigorously to Keo that time. In come the rucks once again. Peter Jones out there, who's been a very good ruckman. Thumped away by Boyanich. Picked up by Bond, the racehorse. He boots it down to centre half forward. Up goes Hurst. Punches it down, recovers nicely. Good football this time by Stewart. Stewart then boots it down. Barry Richardson marks it. 29 points the difference as Barry Richardson marks it in kicking range. Richardson is a glorious long kick. It's about 14 minutes of the last quarter gone as Richardson comes in. A thumping long one, but it's well off direction. Big pack and Duell's got it. And off he goes downfield. He can keep on going. He kicks it down straight towards the Robertson. Robertson being a quiet player, a good hand pass to Nichols. Nichols will go on with it and sends it out to the half-forward line. Robert Walls and Hunt, and Hunt takes a very fine mark. Well, Robert Walls lets him pick it up, and Hunt takes the mark at centre-half back. Gets it handed to him by Boynich, plays on around the member's wing, out towards uh, Robertson and Burke. Burke been very quiet since half-time, and the ball is trundled over the line and will be thrown in centre wing on Northern Stand side. 29 points the difference in Carlton's favour. Richmond whittled this lead down in the final quarter. Tapped down by Carlton. Goes to Robertson. He is pushed over the line. Looking for the free kick but umpire Della says boundary throw in. And a perfect tap down it was by Nichols too. Throw in centre wing. Right down in front of us. Big Nick against Big Brian. Right into his back and the champs got it. 295 games and only five in the history of the league have played more games. I think he enjoyed that push in the back, did Nick? And look at him puffing like Six. a pair of bellows. <laughs> Six goals up. The, the architect of their time. success, yeah. Enormous performance and an enormous kick. Gosh, it's gone 70 yards to the half-forward line right off Wall's shoulder. That's about the second only mistake he's made today. High wooden defence. Gives it to his man, who clears here. It was Clay. But coming downfield is Chandler. Loves running through them and does it well. The ball in to centre forward. It's a joke. What a perfect pass. Took the mark. Gets 15 yards. That puts him just outside the goal square. And Robert Walls, not to be outdone by sharpshooters and Jesselenko and Nichols, is going to line up for his six. What a stupid tackle by Voynich at that stage of the game. There was no value in it and Chandler's pass to go over it again was absolutely perfect. Walls, a great player, puts it through. You can tell when you see Peter Jones jumping up and down like a jack-in-the-box, and that's his sixth. Robert Walls at centre-half forward has played one of the finest games in centre-half forward history. And incidentally, in that record score of Essendon's many, 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 many years ago, it was Whopper Lane at centre-half forward who was the great player. To win premierships, you must have a dominant centre-half forward, and Robert Walls has supplied that for Carlton today. Ten marks. 20 kicks, 6 goals. What a great performance. The Blues are bringing Crane onto the field. They've got goals and players to spare. They're 5 goals up, 30 points is the lead, and the bounce up now sends them on their way for another stanza. What excitement now. Plenty for Kevin Bartlett there. They've got him in a vice-like grip, two of them, Hurst and Keogh. Umpire <laughs> bouncing. <laughs> He's got the report Chandler won't go off as Crane wants to go on. Well, you couldn't blame him, could you? Getting nowhere. Let's go again. They must be tired. What a hard campaign for the Blues. Here's Crane, all ready to get onto the field. And the player who is supposed to be replaced refuses to be removed. <laughs> That's Hurst knocking the ball onto the back line. Keogh jumped for it but missed it. Been picked up again by a Carlton player. They must have 30 on the field. Up to the half-forward line. Here's Jezelenko, one-hander that time. That won't be good enough. Even for him. Picked up by Walls. Shoots it into the full-forward zone. Jones knocks it out here towards Jackson, but he's got two to contend with. He's good enough to do it on today's form. Walsh will win out on this occasion. Still keeps the ball going. The game move. Oh, he ran into a pile driver. Seven, eight, but not out. From the half-back line, a hand pass. He gives it to Francis Burke. Burke at centre wing position, grandstand side, sends it down field where Stewart's in front position. Nicely spoiled by, uh, by Southby. A push in the back, it looked like. Here's a chance for Shooty. Shooty, a left foot snap for goal and puts it through. And that was very well done by Shooty. 
he could see a player crashing down towards him, but Kevin Shooty gets his own second goal and did it very, very well. Shooty, who hasn't had a good match, he didn't play well in the back pocket, he was absolutely thrashed by Keogh in the first quarter, has been a better player when he's been wandering around the ground. And it was a very thoughtful hand pass from Morris too, could have easily been excused for firing at goal, saw Shooty in a better position, and it brought up Shooty's second goal. Right, back with Della. Roberts and Nichols now in the ruck. Nichols won the tap down, the backhander. Goes out to the racehorse Bond and Richmond go forward again. A long hand pass is almost intercepted by Duell. It comes back off to Shin and Shooty. Back to Duell and Carlton get out of trouble. Down to Jackson. Jackson centre wing. Taking a long time to pick it up. Blake's clear. Drives a long raking kick now down towards Jones. And the big fellow can't take the mark. Highwood has it intercepted by Jezalinko and Jezalinko puts it virtually took it off his boot. Oh, Thorough, that's so true. It is done so easily. I wouldn't want that hug from Peter Jones, but it's done so easily. With nonchalant, skillful, immaculate ease, did Jezelenko take away what looked like a perfect hand pass and just sauntered into goal, took his time, and kicked it through from one yard out. That was the epitome of brilliant football. Carlton have made their replacement. Train on the field. Robertson is off the field. The ball going back into the centre. And Carlton, 28 goals against Richmond's 21. By far the highest scoring grand final in the history of the league. And it all started in 1897. Nichols in ruck with Roberts. Roberts won the tap down. It goes out towards Walsh. Walsh up towards half forward. Cheney was interfered with. But do look at the play of this fellow. Hand pass across to Dixon. Hogg should have been uh, dropping the ball. It comes back to Morris. He gets it across it to uh, eventually it's Bartlett right up to the full forward zone and Mackay is in the way for the Blues to save a very promising attack by Richmond. Well over 100,000 watching on. That's the usual thing in league grand finals. Last year for Hawthorne St Kilda it was 118,000. And the year before Carlton Collingwood 121,000 which was the record. That's Dixon with the ball and he didn't do much with it did he? Bartlett winning himself another kick. He's had a rash of them. Sheedy Great is kick. umpiring the game because the umpire doesn't happen to be on the precise spot. And the weary Warriors are brought to their feet. Dixon's had a hard campaign. And there is a free kick in that area. Yes, and they're really very, very tired. Keogh in the forward pocket is stamping his foot to indicate the first twinges of cramp are coming on. Dixon looks very blown. Big Nick we saw it clearly in camera in similar position. Now it's booted downfield towards the centre wing position. Almost taken by Lucas. Bad play, Roberts. An opportunity now for Roberts to redeem himself. He kicks it downfield underneath a Kevin Hall good mark. At centre half back, and this has been one of Carlton's very good players. What a great career Kevin Hall has had with Carlton. So often as he starred in a final series. As full back against Peter McKenna, against Collingwood, he was a great player in the grand final a few years ago. Out wide, good Mark Hart, who's been a very quiet player, and I think that's mark number two to Roy's Hart. Hart, the long kick up towards half forward flank, knocked away by Southby, down to where Robertson has the chance, but uh, he's uh, not Robertson, it was Hurst and it will be a ball up by umpire Della. Half forward flank for the Tigers. They trail by 35 points. Six goals. Into attack, Bartlett again. Tireless, relentless, will never give up. The ball into the goal square area, and it's a Richmond mark. Out in front and taking it, Sheedy, who already, having been moved around the board today like a pawn in a chess game, has kicked three goals. Number four, opportunity coming up. In a game where in the statistics of uh, players on both sides, surprisingly even. Both sides uh, average uh, age 24 years, a height 6 feet and weight 13 stone 3. Sheedy, one of the toughest customers playing in the business, kicks for goal. That's the result. Sheedy gets a point. Three goals, two on his side now. Not like Kevin Sheedy that one because he's not a long kick. But there's no doubt he's a very accurate kick normally. And that would have revived some interest in the flagging fortunes of Richmond. Now it's 143 points to 177, so that's 44 points of difference, seven goals too. That's an unassailable lead at the 21-minute mark of the last quarter as Southby kicks out wide, Hearts in front, Nichols spoils him and sport him very well. Over the line, Armstrong spoiled him actually. That was Nichols, over the line, out of bounds. Peter Jones on the ball and so is Nichols. Roberts gets it down. A lot of very weary players. Bartlett another kick. Duel a great player. Gets a hand pass back and Armstrong kicks it downfield. Jackson could have been penalised. An opportunity for Walls once again. Out it goes to Crane. Crane dodges and turns out of trouble. 
goes it back and straight to Walsh it goes. Walsh turns and boots Richmond to attack to the half forward line. Well played Hall again. Could have been awarded that one. And Armstrong burrows in. Kicks it high on the air out to wing possession. Royce Hart is the only one at home to fight his teammate Prowl. Hart onto his left foot. Boots it down to the 10 yard square. Barm and Mackay go for it. Barm almost got it. Picked up nicely and bolting away as Southby in a lot of trouble. Southby a long hand pass is not good. It's booted back towards the 10 yard square. Hurst the flyer. Southby up with him. And Richmond have got the opportunity as they dive for it. Does Stewart. The umpire, they kicked off the ground in danger, but the umpire's whistle, I think, had blown, indicating his bounce. 34 points the difference in Carlton's favour. It's a ball up on the Richmond forward line. 23 minutes of the quarter have gone. I think it's too much for Richmond. Roberts wins the tap down. In there is O'Connell, comes out to Stewart. Stewart tries to hook it back. He does, too far, and it could be out on the full. We'll wait on it. It is, and a free kick to be taken by Mackay, David Mackay, in the back pocket position. 23 minutes and a half, 23 and a half minutes gone, 34 points the difference. 28-9, or even miraculous kicking by Carlton in the record score for a grand final. Mackay, a long kick. Almost spent permanent of time in the back pocket and the mark taken by Royce Hart. Coming into play in this final term. Long, low torpedo punt kick up towards Barm. Off the hands of the pack of Mackay who takes it. Boots it back towards the centre of the field. Bouncing for it. The coming to it is Chandler. Still uh, full of running is Chandler. Swings the left foot kick around. It's not a good one, but it's going straight to Armstrong. No one near Armstrong. He boots it down towards Walls. Wall slides, so does Boynich. Off the hands of the packet comes, and the ball up will occur at centre-half forward for Carlton. We've got about seven minutes left for play. Seven minutes for more scoring in a relentless, at least high-scoring game. Carlton have averaged about eight goals each quarter. It's dropped a bit behind that now as Clay gets the ball out of the big pack, and it's over towards Bond, who doesn't seem to tire too easily. Jezelenko tackles him all right into Jezelenko, and he'll get the free in that first. No doubt about it, as we say once again. There's Alec Jeselinko, the whiz kid from Canberra. Robert Balls and Rex Hunt bump each other accidentally on purpose. Jeselinko too far out to score. Roberts goes back to become guardian to John Nichols. As Jeselinko, with a good long one, will put it in the 10 yard score. He's kicking to the scoreboard goal as Alex Jeselinko doesn't make much distance. Almost taken by Burke. Out wide it goes towards Dick Clay, who's been a very quiet player. He boots it out wide towards centre wing position, and here goes Sproul. Dixon runs past him, gives Sproul the chance. Sproul hand pass to Richardson. Richardson in a lot of trouble back to Sproul. Sproul then down to centre half forward. Underneath it, the chances there for Southby. A good punch down it was too. Back to Armstrong. Armstrong boots it out looking for Robert Walls. Behind it is Bond. Bond gets an awkward bounce, and Walls dumps it away from him towards the boundary line. It goes. Bond a hand pass back goes more Carlton's way than Richmond. Cumming makes the best of it, however, and coming on the half back line, boots it down towards the half forward line. Over the head of the packet goes, and out comes Southby, and it's over the line, out of bounds. He thumps into Barry Richardson. Great defence by Southby. He's punched the ball away. He's taken marks. He's point beaten players their pointers. Jones and Roberts, Roberts nudged Jones out, goes to Cumming, Cumming kicks Mothered, back to Dixon, Dixon a very tired player, Morris is brought down with the ball, a hand pass from Jones to Paul, Paul a long kick towards Jackson at half forward, and Hunt takes what could have been a mark, but umpire Dillison play on, and will wait on it, and still play on as Highwood comes through the back with the ball. Clears it down from the, uh, the half-back flank position. Tries to overdo it. The hand pass coming across to Morris. Morris steadies himself. A long drop kick up towards forward pocket. Up flies Hart. And it's a mark to Hart. Hart with the ball. 40 yards out. 45 degrees. The Richmond captain, like so many playing with him today, out of sorts and buried in the avalanche of the Carlton attack. Will it be a goal? They're waiting at the Richmond end. They've been waiting a long time for this one if it goes through. It's there. Well played, Roy Hart. Not second goal. Well, one of the quietest days that Roy Hart has had, I think. Kicked it in the final series. And again, what a tribute to the quiet one, Bruce Dool, who's forced him to be moved away. 
had seven kicks in the first half and he's had the first three quarters and he's had seven in this final quarter. Yes, well, it's like the great player is. He just won't be kept down for the whole match. In the centre of the ground, it's Nichols going to do battle with Roberts. Nichols wins it to Gallagher. Gallagher left foot smothered. Out it goes. Gallagher right foot not smothered. Here's a chance now for Lucas. Lucas has got the chance for open goal. He kicks a bad one, and Peter Jones is too tired to chase it. Up right goes Dickie Clay. Clay gets a wonderful bounce, and then Boots Richmond down to centre wing position. There's nobody at home except Dixon and Jackson. They can take their choice as he'll take it. Dixon takes it, should hand pass, doesn't need to. Dixon then steadies and tries the short run. Well done. Gesalenko takes the mark. And Gesalenko decides he'll take our time. With about 28 minutes gone, here's one of the stars of the match in Gesalenko. One of the stars of football, of course. He was an automatic interstate player from his first season. Third in the Brownlow medal in his first season. He was a champion for the first time he played. Out of the first time he played league football, Peter Jones doesn't look like it. Boynich takes the mark. Boynich, hand pass to Bartlett. Dixon go forward. Time running out for the Tigers. They're 28 points down. And Dixon cops one around the side of the head. Chandler gets it out to Dixon again. Dixon not to be outdone. Sends it right down to the full forward zone. But it's all Richmond here. Clay dropped the sitter. He's tackled by Lucas. Punched it out to a centre half forward. Rawls has it. Dummies. Oh. Almost has his head pulled off. And play goes on. As Big Roberts uh, tries to uh, square up the Tigers. It's Sproul with the ball. Centre wing. Long low drop kick towards centre half forward. Sheeney coming to it. But it's Stewart coming in for Richmond. Sends the short pass across in the direction of Barry Richardson, and Richardson is marked. Plays on, fires at golf from a standing position, and a shot has gone astray. And it's very difficult to kick goals from a standing position. Well, if ever an umpire's let it go, Thorold, and yeah. Robert Walls really had his head pulled off and everything else. There's no gesticulation or acting about that one. You couldn't act that unless you were a paid wrestler. And Big Nick ran up alongside to remonstrate with the umpire, who brushed him off and uh, followed up the game forthwith. Well, fifth time lucky for the Blues. They've played Richmond uh, four meetings uh, this year. Uh, a draw on the match being their best result and three losses. But they won the fifth one, hands down. Good mark out there taken by Big Brian Roberts, who was the one who tried to pull uh, Robert uh, Wall's head off his shoulders a moment ago. Over to Bartlett, 130 games in succession before injury caught up with him in the State Series. Into the grand uh, final uh, goal-kicking area. <laughs> Aerial ping-pong, that's how it gets its name. Paul down to O'Connell. Back to the half-back line. Francis Burr. Three kick to Crane. Three kick to Gary Crane. Gary, Gary Crane, who's been one of the gallant players of the Carlton camp, he won their best and fairest in the Premiership side. On the half-back flank, it's fitting he should get a game in this grand final side because he's been full of courage for the whole of his career. Hurst, you shouldn't have gone. Bad football, Hurst. He was pushed eventually. The umpires letting it go, letting it go with a vengeance. And down they go. Francis Burke and Hurst with the contestants. And it will be bounced by umpire Della. Certainly, if it had been one fault in his book, he's let it go almost too much today. Up goes Roberts and gets it cleverly out to Bartlett. Bartlett, once again, a great kick getter, O'Connell the mark. O'Connell on half-back flank steadies the Blues. 28 goals, 9. 177 points for Carlton. Richmond, 22-18, 150. And there's about 30 minutes gone. There are 30 minutes gone, and that's Johnny O'Connell who kicks the final one. Carlton... A most convincing win. There's the scoreboard looming up towards us. 28 goals, 9 to 22, 18. John Nichols, number 2, is the centre of attention, and rightly so. He took over a side from Ron Barassi, a great coach, and he's done it so well. Well, there's John Nichols in the midst of a great crowd of players. It's Alex Jeselinko, another hero of the grand final who's got his arms around his gallant captain coach, and the scoreboard showed Carlton, 28 goals, 9, 177 points, defeating Richmond, 22 goals, 8.